From Corolla One Studios in Glendale, California, this is the Adam Corolla Show. Adam's guest today, from Barbie, Adam Ray. Plus the news with Chris Loxamana and now, Jack of all trades, meaning he likes the trades and jacking off. Adam Carolla. Yeah, get it on. Got to get it on. No choice. We're going to mandate you get it on. Thanks for tuning in. Thanks for telling a friend. Adam Ray in the studio. Happy to be here. And Chris Max Pat is going to have some yeah. news. Uh, fresh off of the astounding success of Barbie, he's featured prominently <laughs> in the film. So you were seen by millions of sure. Americans this last weekend. Uh, oh, I would love to think uh, I was seen by Matt Damon. Maybe uh, maybe Oprah got an early access oh, yeah. screening. Yeah, um, I mean, Barbie did what, 160 million or yeah, 155. something? 155. 155. Well, Oppenheimer did 80. Wow. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So it won the uh, the battle. Yeah. Oh my battle. God, it crushed. I mean, look, it's um, I don't know what really. Th- I think it's the most that I've seen uh, a studio spend for a marketing campaign. I mean, I would have nightmares about um, the Nazis coming back and capturing Jews, and mm-hmm. they were dressed in Barbie apparel. Do you know what yes. I'm saying? Klaus so they, Barbie. Klaus Barbie. So they <laughs> see what I did there. So they infiltrated D minus every... student. <laughs> yeah. D minus. Minus. You can't tell. Yeah. Um, well, Cause I tell everybody yeah. <laughs> other than that. Yeah. But I saw billboards, you know, bus stops, you'd see homeless guys Every... you know, jerking off and their cum would come out and it would like turn into a hologram of Gosling. <laughs> I saw that. Yeah. I, every, it's not cheap. Every home improvement show I would watch yeah. on uh, the, you know, the DIY network was, we're going to renovate the Barbie house, yeah. Barbie house makeover. Yes. I mean, it was, you could not escape it. No. And I think it sort of proved to be wildly effective. 1000%. And I was kind of thinking about it earlier today. It's like, well, first off, I don't care about Barbie. My daughter and her friends who went out and saw the movie, didn't, she never played with Barbies. Well, you were a skipper so guy. You've been self proclaimed like, Skipper. Yeah. You said yeah. she was just, what was it? You said she was dirtier or like she just, she had like a, a backstory that was more intriguing. She was a three input gal. Right. That is, I remember. Yeah. Bar, Skipper was like, you know, she worked at Del Taco, you know, yeah. she, um, I don't know. She probably had an OnlyFans account before that even existed. Skipper they, just. One of the OGs. Yeah. They yeah. want to, and he realized, well, how does this work? How, how many people have to see this movie? And you realize no one wants to be left out of the conversation. Right. So you get to $155 million because half those people want to see the movie and the other half don't want to be left out of the conversation that everyone's going to have right. with all the takes and opinions and whatever. So that just creates a syndrome almost of almost pulling people into the theater just right. because they want to know what's going on and want to know what people are talking about. Yep. I think most people don't want to find themselves in a socially inadequate uh, environment where you're at a barbecue or a circumcision or a, you know, fucking, I don't know, clan meeting. If you're, uh, if you're Chris, I went to like, all three this weekend. weekend. Yeah. <laughs> it's called it's a busy a weekend for Ace Corolla. <laughs> the bris was a little lackluster. <laughs> I, How was the food at the Klan meeting? Well, the Klan rally, well, here was my suggestion. Can we combine the barbecue with the Klan rally? I don't see why you can't. No one here has an issue with fire. That's number one. Or That's potato kind of salad. Our, and, no, or potato <laughs> salad. And we're, we're getting a little peckish hanging around in these robes. It's hot. <laughs> so why don't we make the rally a barbecue? Yeah, okay. And then I'll only have two things to do this weekend. <laughs> yeah. I do think there's something to be said about the the buzz that certain movies create, like you said, like people wanting to be a part of the conversation. And I don't know if I you, mean, when did you film this? Oh man, this is probably. I mean, let me look at. Uh, no, it's probably o- over a year ago. And you you could have had no idea how massive this was going to no, be. No, nobody could have thought. That. I knew from talking to Greta Gerwig in between takes how pumped they were about it. How. How fun, I mean, again, and I've, uh, you know, uh, jokingly um, uh, posted about this, but, you know, I had a, it was about a four, almost four minute scene that I had that they kind of broke into three scenes, Mm -hmm. but it was so, there was so much funny stuff that we did that just didn't make it. And that's Hollywood and that's fine. A little bummed to see it only for the sake of not even, 
you know, I don't care about posting pictures and telling people I'm in it and then having it be, you know, um, a, a much more, uh, you know, uh, smaller window of, of exposure. I, I, you know, I don't care about that. But when you know that you, there was such funny stuff that just didn't make it, yes. you're like, that's all I cared about. You know, being in it for sure. Awesome. The couple lines I kept in, uh, kept in, but you're like, Oh man, like there was one take we had where myself and the other cop made, uh, Gosling and Margot Robbie laughed so hard, and Gosling was like, "If that's not the trailer, I'm not going to be in this movie." That was right. fucking so funny, <laughs> right? And, you know, and then I, uh, you know, tried to jerk him up. So that's yeah. probably also why they cut some of my stuff is I got a little too handsy. You can't do but, that. Well, you you can. You just got to be inconspicuous. Um, but uh, yeah, it was a fun set. People were. Greta, the way she was talking about it, was like, "We're just trying to be real silly. We're making some points here and there, but like." They also just seemed real dialed in and loose, and <clears throat> I think that always does, you know, uh, translate to to how the film turns out. But yeah, I don't think anybody making any song, making any movie, knows what it's going to be because you just can't. And especially seeing how much money they spend on the marketing, usually I feel like that's uh, overcompensation. Yes, it With, usually is. Yeah. So so they. I think we're just like, man, we're going to make a shit ton of money. You got Gosling, Robbie, Will Ferrell is the, uh, you know, um, the, the bad guy more or less. So it's like there was enough star power. And then, you know, just hoping that enough people, like you said, go see it to see it and then go see it so that they're, you know, not, uh, you know, um, walking around with their thumb in their ass at their uh, stepdad's uh, wake. <clears throat> well, I went to that, too. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> That's a busy curl of the weekend. Know. All right. Here's a hypothetical. <clears throat> And I'm interested in everyone weighing in on this one. So there's a lot of stuff in our society that are just sort of running mm. isms and jokes, and, and it gets sort of signed off. Some things just become their own thing. Mm. Like when uh, Michael Brown, the big kid who got shot in Ferguson, hands up, don't shoot. You know what I mean? He didn't have his hands up. He was wrestling with a fucking cop. But we somehow integrated hands up, don't shoot into right. our society over that situation. It's all proven wrong, but it's still there. Or don't say gay bill, which doesn't contain the words don't say gay in it or whatever. But we're, we're good at marketing that way. There's other things that are like, used to be jokes for hack comedians, which is, you know, a, a half hour after you eat Chinese food, you're hungry again. That right. was always a running thing. And I always sort of went, I go, I over order when I do Chinese. I end up getting too much. Always. Because th it, it, there's 28 offerings yeah. and I like 13 of them. Me too. And I'm going to narrow it down to seven. Yeah. Which means I'm always over ordering. I always do the move too, where I put the big pile of rice on the top in the middle and I start piling everything up mm. and it looks like a mountain of food. And I go... <laughs> All right, but this is this is it. The rest is going home. Always a second round. Some more rice. Has some to more shrimp. Because you some forgot more, you whatever. got three different types of noodles. You got. But a I'm soup. never fucking hungry a half hour later. It's just a, a thing that we we put out there. It's died off a little with the Chinese food, but we do these things. Yeah. Uh, short men or don't want to date tall women. Short men fucking love tall women. Oh, yeah. Everyone, Can't you know why? Them. Everyone loves tall women. That's that's a thing. And so here's one that I was examining with Dr. Drew over the weekend. And I, I've always rejected it. But then I had what I think is a breakthrough. And I think it's telling. Mm. And uh, Chris, you're uniquely qualified to answer this question. Sure. Sadly. Oh. I uh, know. It, it'll be interesting. <laughs> Men do not want to be with a woman who's more successful than they are. <laughs> <laughs> this isn't a dick. <laughs> um, and monetarily, especially. Sure. Like a guy couldn't deal with a woman that was making millions of dollars a year and not him unemployed. You know what I mean? Yeah. And so we go, and I think to myself, and I've had this fantasy many times, I would fall down onto my knees <clears throat> and sob openly if any partner of mine throughout my dating history made more money than me. I would love it. It'd be the best oh, yeah. day of my life. Well, you're secure. I, I, I would love for my woman to make more. Now, everyone says secure, security. And then so, and I was talking to Dr. Drew and he's like, yeah, I would fucking love it if my <laughs> wife made more yeah. money. I would love it. And but I feel the same way. 
And Kevin I, Federline loved it. Yes. You know? Yeah. You think he was like, Brittany, could you slow down with the number one hits? I'm trying to get my dance career going. Yeah. And then uh, he had to come out with Popo's out. Popo's out. <laughs> It's so sad. It's, no, it's not sad. It's sad that I remembered it's it. It's sad that you you and I both know Popo Zhao, but if you parked us in front of Mount Rushmore, we'd go, I don't, the dude in the middle, I think that he's on dude a, looks familiar. Is it one of I, these guys on the $5 bill? But yeah. I, would you get my wallet out of the car? I got to confirm some of these dudes. So yeah. sad, but Popo Zhao. Popo Zhao, hey. To the grave. Yeah, we know that. To All the right. grave. So now here's what I said. To Drew, and now here's the part that gets a little controversial, but this is where Chris's candor will be appreciated. I said, that doesn't make sense to me. I would love to be with a woman that was wildly financially successful. I would, I would love it, and I've never met a guy who felt like I'm too insecure to have a wildly successful wife. And if you sort of flip the script on people I know, I know a lot of people that make a lot of money yeah. and their wife doesn't make any money. Yeah. They, they don't work. Okay. Here's what's implied, though. The arrangement would not be the same. If you were with a woman who made millions of dollars a year and you made no dollars a year as the dude... And then it came time to have a discussion. Where are we going on vacation this year? We going to Hawaii? I know you want to go to Hawaii. I want to go to Mexico. Where do you think we would go? We would go to Hawaii yeah. because the woman, the person who's making all the money, who's buying the fucking plane tickets, who's buying the hotel, yeah. who's buying every meal, would win every fucking <laughs> argument. They should. And fucking rightfully yeah, so. You've earned the right. Why is that not turn around toward us? Yeah. Why? I mean, every discussion, like, I want Italian food tonight. I want Thai food tonight. All right, let's fucking, let's have a fist fight in the patio. Like, that would never work. If a society wouldn't accept it, society would not. Oh, you're saying having the guy get to call the shots. To be, yeah. There'd be no such thing as the fucking woman going to her super successful law practice right. the next morning. And go, oh, we got to go to fucking Mexico. Right. First break. Herb wants to go yeah. to Mexico. Everyone in law office go, fuck that poor shit. Right. <laughs> he was that paying for shit. Right. You go, you go, you're the one who's working. You need the vacation. Herb doesn't do shit, sits around home all day, listen to Popo Zao. <laughs> you fucking should be going where you want to go. Because you're, yeah. a, a, every one of her girlfriends would say it. There'd be no big, oh, what do we want to see, Oppenheimer this weekend or Barbie? <laughs> well, hey, who's buying the tickets, <laughs> yeah. bitch? Yeah. Who's putting You're going to bring your own the, popcorn again, Herb? How we get into the How we get into the theater, Herb? And, the, and oh, that's a Lexus that I pay the lease on, <laughs> yeah. isn't it? And Herb doesn't have a, a leg or a pube to stand on. When guys say they would be intimidated by it or like it wouldn't agree with them or they wouldn't do it, the underlying current is, yeah, because you couldn't do all the shit you wanted to do. If right. you said it's exactly the same... Is the male female arrangement, which is let's say the dude makes all the money, the chick makes nothing, and she gets her say on the vacation, the movie, and the restaurant seventy two percent of the time, then dudes would take that would take that fucking deal. Right. But they wouldn't want to <laughs> sit around acting or, or like on yeah, and then she comes home from work, I gotta stand up and pretend, you know, get out of my bathrobe <laughs> and turn down the bobazown and push a swiffer around. Like like I gotta pretend. But if you removed all that and then the stigma that society would have, because society would never tolerate no. that relationship where the dude hung out all day, uh, then I think dudes would go for it. Now, Max Zapata. Yeah. Back to you. Cool. Uh, <laughs> your wife makes more money than you. Yeah. Now. What does she do? She is a CT tech and, at, at Holy hospital. shit. And I have I no idea how much she makes. I just know I don't pay Chris any yeah, so that, If yeah, she works is, at a... You're, you're telling me you didn't look at the if CT If she works at a Popeye's numbers, chicken, I, yeah. would still still have this, I would still have I would still level this accusation. <laughs> she worked a deep fryer at a Popeye's in South Central. I would still be comfortable <laughs> saying, your wife makes more money than you. Yeah. All right. Now, I don't think... Your, your wife's a wonderful woman, and I don't yep. think she would rub it in your face. She doesn't. But I would assume the posture. 
I I would not if I was sitting at home and someone was out making oodles of money, not your situation, rather than making millions of dollars. Yeah. And vacation talk came around. I would just fucking eat it if I wanted to go to Mexico. I'd just be like, I guess we're going about. I guess at this point, go. too, you're relying on the rapport that you have with your significant other yeah. to be able to know, like, I'm sure your wife doesn't have an ego about it and is like, I don't know, maybe because she's so, I don't know. Don't you don't that you she, think, she defers to you for, like, the vacay stuff? Or I don't know, Don't right? you think it's kind of, I, it, but it's... It, what I'm saying is, is it transcends a conversation. It's an understanding. Yeah, it's an unspoken. Like when you yeah. go to dinner with somebody and it's been established who's paying. Yeah. When it's a coin toss between the Cobb salad and the Caesar salad, the guy's paying sort of settles that argument. We'll yeah. do the we'll do the Cobb and split it or whatever. Like they're not ordering for the person, mm-hmm. but. You do kind of win the coin tosses mm-hmm. yeah. in in that you want the au gratin potatoes or the mat or the lobster mash like the guys paying will do make the call right right so what I'm saying is is do you factor it in like where would you go and you're the gap between you and your wife isn't it's not, so it's not such a such a but, chasm yeah. but what I'm saying is is eh, I want to see this I want to see Oppenheimer versus that or what would you guys feel if you made no money. Like I would just give it up all. I think if I, I would made give no it up money, all the time, I, I would give it up. But um, I don't know. I think also the younger, successful woman, <clears throat> at least from what I've seen with, with friends and everything, it, compromise is actually a big thing with them. They actually do take into account even the the men who don't make anything. Like they still like to cater them. I don't. I don't know if that's just the new I, culture. But I, f- I I feel. I feel like women would fucking <laughs> rub that shit in our faces. I don't think it would be tolerant. Of that. <laughs> I've done it. My ex-wife, one time, one time, I pulled the money card. I said, uh, we ordered um, Indian food. Mm. Nice. And uh, then it became a, who's going to go pick up the Indian food? Gotcha. And uh, it was like, I was sort of like, pick up the Indian food. And I buy like, you fly. Like, you, you, you pick up the Indian food. And I just said. Well, I have to prep the toilet for the diarrhea. That's <laughs> right. I said. <laughs> Big job. Get yeah. in the Jag, I lease you. Oh, God. Go down the long driveway. Oh, no, wow. Yeah. The house that I built. <laughs> go down the long driveway from the, from the house. Yeah. Oh, my God. Go and take your time elect- so you, you can go reflect through the electronic- on the house you're coming back to. You got to go through the electronic gates. I built the gate. Oh, God. You <laughs> built the gate. <laughs> and so this is why. Food and get out the credit card that I pay for oh, and give it yeah. to the guy. It all- <laughs> it I helps, know. Now, it helps see, you're saying- build so much right. stuff, too. Now, you guys are wincing. <clears throat> but. If that was a woman doing it for a man, she would be fucking hailed as a hero. Well, we're all. If a woman did that, we'd go, fuck yeah, get in the car, bro. Yeah. That's what I'm saying. Yeah, totally. I know. I would celebrate it. I, yeah, I've definitely done it too a few times to my wife where, uh, but now she just, I'm going to give a shout out, babe. She just got a promotion. She's a VO animation casting. Uh, She was uh, an an assistant. Now she's an associate. Oh, she's a lot more than Chris. (laughs) (laughs) Babe, congrats. Uh, But, but so now, but yeah, for, for a hot minute, I definitely, there were times where. Just as a dude, you get so sensitive and so whatever it was, sure. and if it was a arguing about this or that, and I was just like, "Well, then fucking you do it with your cash." Oh wait, and then it's like, <laughs> "Oh god," and immediately regret it. Right, you know, right. I'm saying that exact same scenario that just made me sound like an ogre somewhere between Al Bundy, Ted Nugent, and Joey Buttafuoco. <laughs> That's how I sound Mary making that statement. Deal. If a woman made that statement yeah. to a man that didn't work, she would be cheered. People go, fucking A. Yeah. That's where we're at. Well, I just, I mean, I don't think that there's something about just the double standard, the stigma, whatever it is, that it will just never not be, it'll never not change from what we just talked about. And I don't know why, or, and it's not for better or for worse, it's just, there'll never be a societal shift that'll be so... And we talk about this on the show because, you know, Robin, there was about a two-year span, Adam, mm-hmm. where she made more than me. Really? Yeah, and I wasn't cool with it, you know. Mm. I said, you know, there's the door. I put your pillow on the curb, mm. and you sleep like the, the, the filthy cunt you are. Did you, you know? let her back in the house to pay the mortgage once a month? Of course, yeah. <laughs> okay. Well, I'm not a fucking idiot. <laughs> I'm just a man. All right, Ben and uh, who else? Is, is, is everyone's? wives make more than they do and uh, it's a good sign adam <laughs> yeah does it does it translate all i'm saying whoa, whoa, is easy is, easy easy 
He's All I'm saying is, is when it's a decision between I you, you want Italian and she wants <laughs> Chinese food for dinner. Is it always just a coin toss mm. or does no. the person who's buying the lion's share of the food get a little heavier, weightier input? I don't think it's a money thing, though. I think just guys give up faster. <laughs> I just They give up earlier. Totally. Like, it's like, I don't want to fight anymore. You can no. have it. Yeah. Just have it. 1,000. They break us down. Yeah. Yes. Yes. They break us down. No, that should it, be that should be the memoir title. It is for it, it, women everywhere. Women they break, break us listen, down. Listen, guess what? We allow it. Have, have boy, up. have boy, girl, twins, and you find out. Like the, the boy, the rule with the twins is like, all right, uh, Natalia, you ride in the front seat. We're going to Malibu. No, first it's uh, everyone dibbing. You know, dibs the front this seat. Way back in the day, front seat. They call it shotgun. The, yeah, the shotgun, and then it's uh, all right. So you ride in the back on the way, and then on the way back. Yeah. Now you're coming in the car back from Malibu, and it's like Natalia's claimed the front seat again. And then as a parent, what you end up doing half the time is you go, just fuck it, just get in the back seat. John. I, I don't want to. Yeah. Please. We don't yeah. wanna, you Come don't want to deal with it. I don't want to do it. Get do the fucking back seat. Here. Yeah, just, just do me a favor. Five dollars. <laughs> just lay down in the back seat. And, and yes, the way is gotten. There is a the way. They have gotten they have gotten their way. But I don't see. I don't think this experiment works. If one of the people makes thirty five grand a year and the other one makes fifty two a year, no, I, it only really works. Significant. If, what what if is that gap? Your wife has to make a ton of dough and you have to make zero. Yeah, I think that fa- would factor in. It can't be like a Rod and J Lo. You know what I'm saying? Like no. they both were bringing, uh, you know, right, plenty to the table. But right. yeah, I don't. Um, I mean, is there a there's got to be a, a, a famous couple out there that's had to talk about this. Pub- well, let's get I Jay guess- Moore on the line. Mm-hmm. Let's get Jay Moore <laughs> on the line. Wait a minute. Which? Uh, oh, <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Or how about Will and Jada? Right? Yeah. Oh, sure. I mean, set it off and girls trip couldn't have uh, <laughs> paid for his. Uh, no. You know, lifestyle. Oh, he may be one of the worst examples of this because he gets cuckolded pretty yeah, much. I mean, fuck. that's what I'm saying. Whoa. Guys just want it to be over. They're just yes. like, please, just just let this be over and we'll move on. And you just you just take. I think the hit. that's more often uh, what it is. All right. Well, in in other other news, uh, I just read a tweet that somebody sent me a great picture. Now, don't put it up yet, but. For years, I've told you guys that it was gas, grass, or ass. Nobody rides for free. That would be the bumper sticker on the van. And then that that morphed. That's a 70s thing. Mm. Probably a 60s, 70s thing. Okay. Gas, grass, or ass. Yeah. Uh, then that morphed into an 80s thing, which is Coke, poke or toke. Mm. Nobody rides for free. Because we had to kind of update it. This oh, yeah. was the go-go 80s. People needed Coke, Clever. Poke, sure. <laughs> Nobody rides for free. And who then came up, who came up with this? Uh, a scholar? Sure. I, yeah. I don't know. I think it's biblical. I'm not <laughs> sure how far back it goes. Same what? guy who came up with that weird S you drew in uh, your notebook in elementary <laughs> yeah. school. Yeah. yeah. A wise, wise man. The from, guy that came up with, uh, what is it, 8008 for boobs on the calculator? Yeah. Right. Yeah. yeah. A genius. A, a pioneer. He had a lot a legend. To do. Then. At some point, there were a lot of great T-shirts out there. The best, I used to, and it, the best T-shirts are worn by construction guys. So mm. I used to read everyone. I had a drywaller named Russ that had the name. It was like, you know, a, I can't remember. It was like whatever casino. Um, poker poker in the front, liquor in the rear. No, liquor in the front, poker in the rear. Oh, my God. That, that was good. Yeah. You know? That was my high school yearbook quote. And then, <laughs> Then there was a Rosignol ski company yeah. who was, I think, bought by Head or something. And it would say, the shirt would say, give me Rosignol or give me Head. That was another wow. strong contender. There were the two ducks that were fucking in the air that said, fly United. Yeah, that was a strong, that was a strong one. But I, uh, oh, and there was, uh, oh, and there was the super sweaty cartoon t-shirt pigs fucking that said making bacon mm. on it excellent shirt did they have a shirt of peppy Le Pew like prancing through the woods sniffing uh intently and it said i can smell your pussy from here <laughs> uh, i don't know if, if not, they did but they should have yeah. they should have i think i've seen the leader in the club i think there's a new hero yeah in the, in the t-shirt department Please. can we show this yeah this is an awesome 
awesome picture. It says it's on the back of a dude who's, <sighs> by the way, I. It's so weird. I already know what he looks like from the front. You wear your sunglasses. If you wear your sunglasses outside of a ball cap, I know how you vote. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> that's, way, that's all I know. We got a Trump supporter here. I literally can tell how you would vote by what you do with your sunglasses. Yeah. If you hook them over your shirt collar, you're going Democrat. <laughs> if you put them outside 1, of your hat, yeah. you're yeah, going the Trump. Bill. The front of his shirt says, fuck your feelings. By the way, I love that Chris goes, I can already tell what this guy looks like from the front. That's a fun game yes. <laughs> called like back of the neck where you have right. to look at this shot and then decide. It's almost like a new age guess who. You have to sketch <laughs> what the front of this man's face looks like and then add a name to him. I'm going to go with Daryl or like... Kenyon, which he just like gave to himself. His real mm. name was maybe like Kyle. Mm. But he's like, Kenyon feels like, you know, because I'm 2% black because I did a 23 and me. And all his, you know, white friends are like, yeah, that's. The shirt says, yapper, snapper, or crapper, where do you want it? Mm. It took me yeah. a second. Like I had to take a beat. Yeah. Okay. Snap. Oh, fish. Okay. Snapper okay. is. Snapper. No. Yeah. The, yeah. The, the, the mouth, the yeah. machine, yeah. or the ass. Where do you where do you, where do you want, want it? it? Wow, <laughs> that's an aggressive. Shirt. I mean, I would argue that it needs to be on the front of your shirt. Yeah, totally. Because the back, well, don't you? Well, this is a guy that doesn't want to have to. He wants to get the message across, but he doesn't want all the uh, the fanfare that comes with it. He, he doesn't need to see it. your reaction. Doesn't yeah. want to talk about it. He's like, look, this is how I stand. This mm. is what I believe in. But it's not up for discussion. Just I, let me know, I guess. Get to know the real me first. I would, before, I would like to I turn around. I would like to have a Mexican away. standoff, like a sexual Mexican standoff between this gentleman mm. and the woman that I was sitting behind on the 101 when I was like 21. Couldn't have been poor, less layable, driving a beat-up pickup truck. And the, the, she had a license plate frame that said, yes, I do, but not with you. And I was just literally a single tear. Oh, like, yeah. I was like, that's so true. There's no way this bitch would fuck You thought me. she put that on just for you? <laughs> yeah, I assume she did. Yeah. <laughs> now, I don't know if she knew where I was going to be on the freeway. Oh, but my God. I'd like to have her square off with this guy. Yeah, dude. Because she'd be like, shirt read the shirt. license plate frame. And yeah. he'd be like, read the back of my shirt, bitch. Now, pick an orifice. It's a stand-up. Pick an orifice. <laughs> Who's hosting that Yapper, show? Yapper, snapper, yeah. crapper. Would- and she'd be like, yes, I do. <laughs> But not with you. And he'd be like, read it again, bitch. <laughs> Where do you want it? Where do you want it? I know you do it. I'm not asking you. I'm telling you. Neither one of them are defining it, which is also fun, you know? This mm-hmm. is actually a really fun game show. Where yeah. they just they go back and forth and we ask the audience, what do you think they're even referring to? <laughs> you know? <laughs> what is the worst place he could wear this shirt to if you had to just drop him off into somewhere? Well, uh, we started off talking about the barbecue. Sure. The clan rally. The clan rally. But then we brought up the bris. This is the show. I'd say the bris would be the worst. This place. is the show. Each show has three different locations like that, specific social functions. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Instead of those shows where they drop you off in the middle of the woods with a, a knife and you have to work your way out. And they I, pay, I, it's almost I, impractical <laughs> jokers esque. They have to pay this person a certain amount. I, and I, and listen, the amount goes up with how crass the shirt is. is. <laughs> and you have to walk around and you have to make friends. Remember? And if you can get numbers from four strangers, you oh. earn the amount of money for that challenge. Remember the million woman march after Trump got elected? And Madonna was up there talking about blowing up the White House. Yeah, and so Judd. funny. Ashley Judd yeah, no. like, literally had like a, a <laughs> mental meltdown yeah. up on stage. I would say that rally. And I'd say at the front. I get five I minutes like, to live. When, when Ashley Judd is making her crazy speech about bleeding and women and mm-hmm. Trump, you'd have to stand in the front. That oh, on an apple box, <laughs> and all nine hundred ninety nine point nine million women who are behind would have to read that shirt. Yeah. Oh, I would. I would. You know what I would do? I, I hear what I would. I would. I, I, I would say an audio tech at that rally. So like Madonna would give the speech, and then Ashley Judd would give the speech, and then you'd come out on stage. And you'd like change a mic and plug a cord, but you'd turn your back to the audience. You know what I mean? And you'd be like lowering the mic stand, checking the monitor, checking, you're like, check, 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 check. You know, and you're like, and your back yeah. would be turned. 
I mean, get how put long, on the big screen eventually. Right. How long before that audience got it just swept a over wave that audience? Of booze <laughs> every, from the front the, to shut the, the fuck back. up. <laughs> the greatest moment ever. I have a question. I've heard yapper. Mm-hmm. I've, I've used crapper. Sure. Snappers uh, throw me for a loop. I'd like to do a little role play mm-hmm. where I'm this guy mm-hmm. at the barbecue mm-hmm. and I'm bringing up the word snapper in conversation. So okay. Chris Adam, you're my fellow pals of this guy. So uh-huh. whatever that does for your character choices, mm-hmm. um, I'll give you a name. We got Leroy and Alton. Alton. And I'm Daryl and okay. we're hanging around and I'm going to bring up the word snapper in conversation. I would love to see how his pals uh, respond to that. Let's hear it, Daryl. Right. Man, so I don't know if you guys uh, read lately, but... Um, I they're, they're, of course not. <laughs> read? Well, what are you, a fag? <laughs> <laughs> well, hey, hey, hey. Maybe. <laughs> but I, I do I do think... Yes, I was reading this article. It was, um, I was talk, some, talking about how tampons are made by the government because, you know, basically... So you ever take a, you know, you t- you know when you take a woman's pants off, you know, and you haven't asked her, you just did it, you know. Mm. But it, things were heading that way. Yeah, so hold I was, on, let me let me harken back to last night. Sure. Okay. So you know how like she sits in a certain way on mm-hmm. on your futon where she's like they're already off anyway because she just you know she just came back from using your crapper. You know, mm-hmm. and so she's mm-hmm. there. She didn't pull them all the way up. You know, mm-hmm. you know. I don't even know if she wiped, and that you know, that's only between her and God. You know, mm-hmm. they ain't stopping me. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? <laughs> but hey, but hey, can I say this, Daryl? <laughs> uh, combining the barbecue and the clan rally was my idea. <laughs> And really? I just, I'm not saying I want cash, but I'd like a little recognition. Well, Leroy told me uh, that it was his idea, but it felt like an Alton move. Mm. So congrats and thank it you. It was inspired by him, but I, yeah. I pitched it. Yeah, what do you think of the flags, by the way? I like them. I like, listen, first off, you know I love the General Lee. <laughs> And you know, oh, you're a big fan of any Lee. David Duke, Lee, the power forward, Sarah Lee, the baker, and Dukes General of Lee. Dukes of Hazard. Dukes of Hazard. Love that charger. <laughs> Yeah. So, well, you know, you've got the best yapper out of all my friends. I'll say that all. Nobody has a gift to gab like you. Mm. And the way that you welcomed people in Mm. with your fuck Jew baked beans Mm. really uh, was an extra, you know. That's a granddaddy's recipe. I learned how to do that from that uh, show on what's that gay network, uh, (laughs) Netflix. (laughs) They. That homo. Is that where they fake the moon landing? You didn't do that show, is it cake? Oh, well, I mean, you know. And they can make almost anything out of cake. I hate to admit it, and I it do. Looks like I the appreciate that making program. it out of. Yeah. The dude from Saturday Night, the gay guy from yeah, Saturday it's gay. Night. Yeah, they're all gay. Yeah, well, anyway, that inspired me to do the uh, fuck the Jews uh, beans. Baked beans. Baked beans. <laughs> yeah. And you know, and I know, you know, my cousin's sisters. I think dad or, or he's got some sort of. Her, there's a hermaphrodite in the family some way. I don't somewhere. know what that word is. It's when you got both. It's when you got a a cock and a snapper. Oh, like Al Roper, Roker. Is not that? No, that Roper Black was Fellas? the movie critic. Oh, I, who had Aspergers. Oh. Isn't Al Roker the weather guy? Doesn't he have both parts? Yeah, um, but he doesn't talk by, about you know, it. I can tell by his frames. Yeah, it's kind of like Cher. You know, she drinks um, her own, you know, uh, what is it called? You know, when you're snapper, you know, when a girl's snapper, you take her pants off and it's mm-hmm. it's like all bushy and, you know, mm-hmm. f- it looks like Fern Gully meets where the sidewalk ends. Mm. <clears throat> you ever read that book? Speaking of snapper, <laughs> can you flip it on the grill there? <laughs> no, I'm talking about the, the snapper in between a woman's thigh region. You talk about Cher? No, I'm talking. No, I ain't not like whippersnapper like that. Dennis the Menace type kid is mm-hmm. getting on my nerves with his, you know, Down syndrome and his, you know, lazy eye. I'm talking about the thing that you know. You know how I got that shirt, you know, that says basically, "I'm down to fuck." I'm DFW. Where mm-hmm. do you want it? The front, mm-hmm. the back, or the side door? Mm-hmm. Well, so I changed it from that <laughs> to 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 you know you know. Well, the original shirt was Yapper. Jake Tapper or Crapper? Who oh. would you? What? Where would you put it? Yeah. But I wanted to make more of a point, so I mm-hmm. changed it to "Where do you want it?" Mm-hmm. And then put uh, t- we put Tapper on the back burner and put in Snapper. Mm. You guys Please. are acting like you don't know what a Snapper is. No, I. 
No, listen. I mean, I it is know. a fish of some sort. It you know, is, it's in yeah. the aquatic family. Yeah, for sure. But, Pussy. Okay. Ah. Yeah. No. Gee, you just got me all off the highway talking about share. <laughs> Well, look, I'll go on a share tangent any day of the week. You don't have to pay me, but I'm talking pussy. Mm, Vagina. Yeah, Yeah, next time, Daryl, you feel the impulse to share about share, Mm. just button it down. (laughs) Well, look, I will never overshare about share. And if you want to double dog dare me... Look, there's the there's the share. Have you ever taken the share double dog dare? Don't care. That's where, well, every time you rhyme, you know I get turned on. You're going to have to easy with that. <laughs> Fuck, you know, I don't want to, you don't end up on a Bud Light can. I'll drink you up and suck you up and, you know, just I'll Jake Tapper your ass. So anyway, you, I guess what I was asking with all that was, do you guys like the shirt? Mm. You're my two best friends. No one's known me longer or seen, seen the inside of my, in my taint, you know, when I had mm. that taint surgery. Mm. We got, we're there for you. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Gotta be there. Your voice keeps changing on me, Leroy. <laughs> I got bronchitis. <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> he inhaled too much barbecue smoke. <laughs> either, either that or he's, he's nervous about his clan speech. <laughs> All right. And <laughs> <It's> a long way <laughs> to go. How's it going? Yeah. How's it going? Yeah. I want a podcast with those two characters. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I would... Uh, yeah, that's that's also another good podcast. Go to a clan meeting and just turn your phone recorder <laughs> get on. Get the mics on. Yeah. yeah, just turn the mics on. Yeah, I don't know. Uh, the clan is something that I. It's a, sort of the chupacabra. I yeah. know what it is. I hear about it all the time. I've never seen it. No interest in yeah. seeing it live. No, but um, you know. All right, <laughs> we, need, we need to take a break. <laughs> The more hypothetical, but well, that was fun. That was a fun play because Snapper. I do, you know. Again, my whole point with that was, we. I recognize the you got to convince some people the words that button the shirt. But like, how does this this guy's using it in his everyday life, and how is that for the people mm-hmm. that that know him best? Well, <clears throat> also, t shirts got to be digestible very quickly. Got to know that you have to. It has to read fast. Yeah, people don't follow you around. You know, this took me a beat. 1, but I, I appreciate it, Dawson. I, I feel like it's it's a uh, almost a work uniform shirt for like a plumber or something. Sure, and that makes sense to people in a certain region. But the thing, the aggressive nature of it is, is you're gonna get it. You're gonna get it. Yeah. But you have a choice, mm-hmm. and I think that's what's. I think that's the bright side that we should look at <clears throat> is that there is a choice. Yapper, snapper. Or crapper. There probably is right. a business on the front, like you know, Mike's, yeah. you know, hardware, or it's you know, it's a I, softball shirt. I had a friend who who ended up in a whorehouse in Tijuana. Go on, which was really just the titty bar, the strip bar we were in, but it sure. was like upstairs. And they give you the choice when you get up to the room: <laughs> the or, snapper, or crapper. Yapper, snapper. They don't. I don't think they put crapper on there. Although if you. Pulled out a wad of bills. I think everything would be on the table. He bought yapper in this line. He bought the yapper. Gotcha. He bought the yapper, and two minutes, five minutes into the yapper, switched to the snapper. Oh god! And they just double charged him. And I feel that way. I feel that way about ordering a double when you order a drink. Yeah, it shouldn't just be. Twice. Double, yeah. It's just like if you order an In and Out burger, the In and Out burger is four bucks. But if you go double double, it's six bucks. But mm. it's not eight bucks. Yeah. It's not like we're going two, but just put an extra patty in there. For yeah, sure. we're not doing more mix. We're not doing another glass. We're not doing more lemon or more whatever you're mixing it with. It's a little more vodka or whatever it is. The the fucking double shouldn't just be fucking double. Can you know, I get a little word- price break here? Yes, Please. and so. He gets pitched the price. We didn't have any money, but he had a little bit of money. He gets pitched like 20 bucks for sex, right? Wow. Or or for yapper or snapper. Oh, man. Then he goes upstairs, and they're like, yeah, and by the way, the room's 20 bucks, too. So already... Oh, the fleecing wow. has begun. Of course. You know, where's gotcha. John Stossel when you need yeah. him, you know? And if you want eye contact, that's another 60. So he has to pay the you want 20 me to finish out. the Sudoku, that's 80. <laughs> Just the 20 for the room. <laughs> then he switches from Yapper to Snapper and gets out of there with 60 bucks, which is a, that was 
four days in Tijuana for us, like sixty oh dollars. That was all the money. That's insane. Yeah. All right, we'll take a quick break. Be back right after this. Let me tell you about Turo Innovative. It's the world's largest car sharing marketplace with Turo. You can book any car you want, wherever you want, from a community of local hosts. Browse a huge selection of vehicles for just about any occasion or budget. Book an SUV or minivan for a family road trip, a pickup truck for some errands, or even test drive an EV. Every trip is backed by liability insurance. Terms, conditions, and exclusions apply. Find your drive. Forget your boring rental cars at Turo, T-U-R-O dot com. Hey, let me talk to you about something that is serious for a minute. I'm sitting here holding some coins that were sent to me by our new partner, Lear Capital. Having precious metals on hand or in your hand, like I have them right now, provide financial protection as part of a portfolio, but it can also drive a handsome return. If you invested in gold in 2000, you'd be looking at a near 400% return. Yes, 400%. I'm not saying sell everything and buy gold, but I am saying you should connect with Lear Capital and at the very least, get a free investment guide. Everyone worries about wealth protection and I see precious metals is an easy way to feel protected. Do me a favor. Go to learadam.com and ask for a free investment guide. Educate yourself and learn more about diversifying or even beginning a portfolio plan. If you go to learadam.com today and buy one ounce of gold, my listeners will receive one ounce of free silver. That's what we call a BOGO. Buy one, get one. Check out learadam.com. That's learadam.com. Adam Ray is on the Adam Carolla Show. Adam Ray's got dates, too. Stand Up Live in Phoenix. This weekend. Great club. That'll Love be it. this weekend. Hilarity's coming up in Cleveland, Ohio, and the La Jolla Comedy Store coming up. That'll be August 10th to the 12th. AdamRayComedy.com. Um, all right. In, in movie news, uh, you guys tell me. Mm. Uh, got a few, since everyone's talking about Barbie, let's stay on the theme of the movies. Um, I'm sitting around um, with my son a few days ago. Or we're sitting in the movie theater that uh, I built in my home. Gorgeous. It's gorgeous. Only and, seen it and smelt it once, but man, that was yeah. the dream theater. And I uh, I said... Um, you get a Paul Rubens it in there ever? Oh, yeah. Well, no, I told him. Yapper, snapper, crapper. <laughs> like, um, That's code for leave the room, nobody son. Nobody rides for free. So... I said, uh, we're just scrolling. We're going to watch a movie. Cool. And we're just scrolling through all the, the the possibilities. And we get to this movie called Devotion, which is, and they have the Rotten Tomatoes score there. It's 81% and it's 92 with the people. I was like, what year did this, when did this movie come out? And it's like, oh, it came out a year ago or nine months ago or whatever, whatever it is. Stars Jonathan Majors. He's the Creed dude. Yeah. He's a great yeah. actor. 1,000%. And uh, Glenn Powell. Top Gun. Top Gun. And I'm like, these are two major upcoming stars yeah. in this movie. It's 90, 81%, 92% with the audience. It's a World War II movie. I love World War II mm-hmm. movies. Well, let's just watch this movie. And it was really good. Awesome. And it had a good story. And it was based on a true story and blah, blah, blah. And then when it was over... Like Sonny and I looked at each other and went, this movie's a year old. No one's heard of this movie. Mm-hmm. I've never heard of this movie. Yeah, and I realized that the title, Devotion. Terrible title. It's a it's a World War II movie called Devotion. It, it looks like it's a couple of gay pilots that are struggling. <laughs> it's broke back broke in the back, sky. It's right. broke back devotion. Right. And I just thought, I think they literally torpedoed this movie with the shit title. Like, yeah. They like, sidewindered it. We had uh, there's a bunch of World War II movies, but like in the 70s, there was like Torah, 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 and it was like big block letters, mm-hmm. and it was like, oh, yeah, I got to fucking see the shit out of that. Devotion. Soft. Soft. Feels mm-hmm. weird. Yeah. So I don't know how they landed on Devotion. There's two big stars, great movie, lots of action, 
True story. Should have seen it like Saving Private Ryan. Nobody, nobody's heard of it. Came yeah. and gone. Title. Because of the title, right? Title definitely has something to do with it. I think Jonathan Majors has something to do with it, just because studios are kind of trying to bury him as well. They are. Yeah. Oh yeah. What did he do? He well, allegedly he's uh, he's laid his hands on women and abused we them. don't even. Yeah, uh, you the, can't do that. The the thing about and I don't know what month this came out, mm-hmm. and maybe it came out after the controversy. His story, well, well, he's like I don't know out bar hopping with his girlfriend. Uh, they're in like the back of an Uber or something. She, I think she kind of gets on him, maybe putting her hands on him or something. He pushes her back or something. I don't know, s- scratches her or something. She's not hurt. Then she calls the cops because she's probably drunk and pissed off or something. Mm. Then like the cops arrest him. And then she goes out and parties for the rest of the night right. without him. And then, like, the guy driving the Uber was saying, like, she was the one who did it and stuff mm-hmm. like that. There, I, I don't even know it's what all, it... It's really blurry. Like I and, don't even know course, what it is. Like, I don't even... I mean, it, it, it could have been, like, we're both drunk. We're in the back of the Uber. She pushes him and he pushes her or something. And he's getting fucking... And supposedly, she, like, texts him back, like, hey, they got the wrong story. I'll clear it up eventually. And she doesn't do that. But there are texts that say that. Like, it, it, it is really blurry, but it's what even, can, yeah. even if you're accused of this, I you, mean, yeah. he is, he's Marvel. He's supposed to be Marvel's Ugh. next, like, Thanos. Bro, you can't be... At this stage in the game, you have to know, like, if you're gonna hit your significant other with a pillow, you gotta do it at home. Yes. That was a joke. You guys were supposed to laugh. Um, no, but you can't. Carol, like, you? <laughs> engaging even in any, like, it's just, it's so not the move at home or publicly. And especially, even if you're in the right, it's like there's, if they were both, you know, Johnny Depp, Amber Heard hitting each other. Yeah. You, it doesn't cancel it out. It just highlights. It's like when a guy tries to cough and fart at the same time. You're mm. like, <clears throat> and you're like, nobody heard, right? No, dude, you just highlighted the fart even more mm-hmm. and doubled down with extra <laughs> noise and sounds. Um, there was a better analogy in my head, but I went with that one. But I don't think it's, so. It's fitting. But I think that um, you just, you know, being involved, like you said, associated with that story, it's just like people go, oh, man, oh, and they just go, oh, you're that guy now, right? Yeah. I don't like that. Like his his uh, endorsements have dropped him. Like he was supposed to be like the the yeah, voice of like the army he or was something. The and they dropped him. Big thing. Incredible and, actor, by the way, too. Like, yeah. He was great. Know. So freaking good. He was great in Devotion, and you. I didn't even know. I thought he was like sort of the dude with the abs from from Creed. I didn't know he had the chops that really he, he can chops. really he act went to like Yale or something. Yeah, me. and I. Here's all I'm saying though. We need some sort of yardstick to measure what uh, what Harvey Weinstein did yes. versus pushed drunken in the back of an Uber where you just get. Canceled. Well, well, even, 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 <laughs> even me, sorry to cut you off, Chris. Oh, I have a problem with not letting people finish speaking and then making them sleep quick. I, even I got chastised for mm. the way mm. that I did ah. what, I, what I was doing, you know. Yeah. And it's not even totally confirmed what the dead what the dead to do. You do have you reached you, out to you, Jonathan? You could do the roofies. Jonathan who? Taylor Thomas? Yeah, he's the first guy that I drugged. I mean, hugged. Oh, no. I get my drugs and hugs mixed up, Adam. <laughs> Camille, man, so dedicated. Just by your side. Who? Camille. Your Felicia wi- your Rashad. Wife? No, Camille's your wife. Felicia Rashad oh. was pretending to be your wife. Oh, I get TV and real life mixed up, no. too. Yeah. yeah. I just found out Toby Maguire wasn't Spider-Man or Seabiscuit's dad. Oh, really? Or writer. Who was he? In that movie, I, I didn't. See I just that saw one. the trailer on YouTube. I like your shirt, by the way. Yapper, yeah, cra- snapper, yeah, crapper. Crap, Nobody rides mean? for free. I like. Well, it was originally just a shirt that said, "Where do you want me to put it?" Psych. Uh-huh. I'm already in you. Oh, but, you do the pudding pops. Yeah, it's a branding. Yeah, move Jello pudding pops. Yeah. Those were good. Yeah, they were laced also with Plan B gummies. I would argue that we had pudding and we had popsicles that we didn't need to combine the two, but let's not. Well, in agree the to disagree. Okay, you know, yeah. I don't come into your show and tell you how to turn no, the lights right. on. You're right. So he was. 
canceled over a thing that I don't even think was a thing. Okay. Uh, well, first right. off, the person you assaulted was out clubbing later that right. night. But here's and then she had a bunch of texts saying, "Don't worry, I shouldn't have done this." Or, yeah, but if I recall, other women have also now started stepping uh, in as well. So, oh, and, you know, that's well, that's bad. The, then that's <laughs> I mean, the problem. Yeah, but if it was a one-time thing, I, I mean, truly, the Johnny Depp Amber Heard thing. I mean, I think everyone was like, "Yeah, they're both like again, they just canceled it out with both being." You know, it's like, I mean, I think she did end up probably smacking him a, a little harder. And, um, but he was well, just so cool about it. He's can like, I... look, the bruises make my eyeliner look better than it was to begin with. And I had a giant pint of Merlot at him. <laughs> so, also, as soon as she pooped in the bed, I thought I can hit her. Well, Am I wrong? Uh, you. Poop, well, let me finish poop, with the TV remote, the Apple TV remote. It's oh, tiny. Apple, the Apple. Yeah, you can that's barely fine. get any sort of cut on your face. I mean, I was once hit with a bottle. A oh, bottle. Yes, I was in Greece. I, I think Johnny. I think I think the optics here are. You are essentially built like a waif model. You mm -hmm. know, you're all scarves oh. and nail polish and shit, mm -hmm. you know, and the eyeliner light. and mm -hmm. shit. This is a jacked, big black man uh. who we last saw on screen beating somebody up. And that's the Jonathan Majors. That's the optics. I was part. up for that movie, by the way. Jacked Big Black Man. Oh, really? Mm. And instead you... you you I did, did devotion. <laughs> I, I got cut out. I think I think part of it is J Johnny Depp just doesn't look like he could hurt somebody. Yeah. And this dude. Yeah. Fuck. When he takes his shirt off in Creed, you're like, oh, this guy's a Big killing dude. machine. Yeah. That you does. Know? I think that, that, that factor factors in. in. Uh, totally right. factors in. Right? I want to say this about the title thing. Uh, it you're you're so right. That sometimes does carry more weight than I think you um, really uh, are thinking but about. But they it, didn't try to bury it because of the title. No. They, it just, I mean, it later just on. It. If Jurassic and Park was called Laura Dern's Problem, I don't right. think. Right. <laughs> ah, that's a good point. It's, I mean, yeah. I, I got to meet myself halfway. That's actually I, a great title. It is. Well, right. I, I wait, but I wait you wouldn't watch it. What yeah. if it was called Creature Camp? Yeah. Not as cool. Not yeah. as cool. Does or it, Bloody it. Raptorville. Yeah, Bloody Raptorville would be much or, better. Um, yeah. I don't know. Devotion's just a weird homoerotic sounding name. Yeah. Right? And it's for it's a, a World War II. Oh, sorry. It's for a Korean War. I think it was a Korean War era few years after world war II. even big black jack now, beef or whatever you said was better than, than devotion let me give you another title and um now here's a movie where they came up with the title before the movie for mm. sure i did not go and support you by watching barbie this weekend fine but i did sit home and stumble across a movie starring robin williams and tim robbins from 1990 called Cadillac Man. Oh, my God. And I was like, I do remember this I've movie. I've never heard of this. By the way, I fully support any sort of Robin Williams deep dive ever, <laughs> so no problem about it this. It was a movie about nothing. It was, there is no reason to make this film. I have no idea how the script read. Robin Williams' talents were completely squandered and no. wasted. He just played a guy who worked at a Cadillac, sold Cadillacs in like New Jersey and loved women, no. you know? And also it was 1990. It, it it seemed like it was from the 40s, like in terms of how different we are as a society. How the fuck did that get made? That's like four years pre-Doubtfire. Yes. Which I guess a lot can happen in four years, especially at that time. Like we, one other movie after Cadillac, I'll, probably. I'll play you the trailer. You see. Oh, well, see Ryan it. did it, too. Didn't they do like Mac and Me and Sophie's Choice or no? All right. Here we a go. Big Cocoon. Yeah. Benz. Now Benz and Benz. Uh, Benz. 300E Benz. 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 Joey O'Brien loves to sell cars. Benz. Oh, Benz. 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 Mercedes Benz. Benz. Mercedes Benz. 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 Right now you're probably thinking, hey, this is not the car for me. Right. Or oh, with a touch of one button. Max Headroom. I'm talking emotional oh, support. Oh, Emotional, press, can yeah. you afford that? Yeah. I'm gonna make it happen, huh? This emotional thing you want. And he loves... My, my. Too many women. Yeah. You know when you want something, mm -hmm. you gotta go out there, you gotta take it like a shark. Oh, well, that's how I should take you from underneath. Oh. Why'd I ever leave you, Tina? We were asked to leave. Do you remember why? Now, <laughs> he has a little explaining to do. <laughs> I wanna know how many times you did that. And I wanna know where, and I wanna know how. Her too, and my wife, and his wife? How the hell you they got play time this to music make a living? under oh, every trail. Talking to you, Joey, this yeah. Oh. Come on, Lisa. Lisa! 
I knew you were doing That's Lisa Dottie from a league of their own. What's that Lauren Petty? How many girls you got? Tank girl. This is my daughter. Tank girl, she's in Free Willy as like the uh oh, no, 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 trainer. The trainer, yeah. Robin looks like his birdcage character, and that's why I'm all on board right now. Lila, listen, there's an explanation for all this. There really is. Oh. Robin Williams. Tim Robbins. You got a lot of girls. I got the main trailer guy. You? It ain't easy. Cadillac Man. I watch a movie. I have no idea what it's about. Are you serious? It's, 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 I like it's, the trailer. It's a zero it's of a movie. It's like he loves the ladies and he's getting in trouble with the ladies because you know he do that yeah, thing where he's piece. using the wrong name, the yeah. wrong. He's got. I got to. I got to get out of this date early so I can get with my other gal. And it's just, so he was just bouncing around. So it was like Cadillac like Man. It also could have been like. Man who won't stop fucking. <laughs> yes. Like it was just fucking man. He was know? like a soulless, <laughs> Robin dis- Williams. despicable Tim guy. Robbins. And it was, fucking all, man. it was also a lot of this in 90s movies, like yeah. 80s and 90s movies. They go, they go, uh, hey, Bob, you got to front me some cash. I don't have any money. Hey, you're out wasting it on the ladies. Out wasting it on the ladies. Like I've been in every tax bracket <laughs> of, available. I've never really wasted it on the ladies. Yeah. Like, or that's not been an issue. Like no. if you make a, good living then you're not gonna go out and waste it on the the ladies but <laughs> it was a lot of a lot of a lot of that although jen may be wasting a little <laughs> though on you but, so i uh, think this is what the movie looked like to me and if i was doing you know the the trailer you mm-hmm. know robin williams is the guy who works at a car dealership <laughs> he's trying to balance the struggles and time to give to his employees and also make sure the dealership is a successful dealership but he loves that snapper. So every <laughs> night he has to leave the dealership and fuck another snapper, only to come back to the dealership the next day and make sure they can still send those Ford Broncos. Robin Williams in Fucking Man. That's what it looked like to me. So then I had to do a deep dive yeah. on this. First things first. Who wrote it? Oh, I got into all of it. I got into all of <laughs> I it. I can't wait. So there's a couple of things. Um, I was like, who the fuck wrote this <laughs> film? It's not even, there's no, you would never read the script and go, oh, we should make this. Cause it no didn't, way. it just didn't have any rudder or any purpose. You got, you, we were not involved. Tim Al, uh, sorry, Tim Allen, Tim Robin, Tim Robbins, Robbins, Robbins. Tim Robbins, yeah. Tim Robbins. I was watching this movie Henry. in real time. I got 41 minutes into this movie and I stopped and I was like, wait a minute. I thought the thing said Robin Williams and Tim Robbins was in this one. Where's Tim Robbins? Tim Robbins didn't show up until 41 minutes into the film. The, mm, yeah. the second, the the second half. billing, I went back and back timed it and did everything. He was, we were halfway into this film before he showed up. Um, That's not fair. Now, I, I agree. You're putting them up on the marquee. I don't know how they got either one of these gifted, talented actors to be in this. It, it was Drek. But what I what I noticed is when I looked for it on Rotten Tomatoes, like I want to know what the score was. Underneath it, it said, if you enjoyed this movie, you'll also enjoy these movies. Now, here's where the – and Chris – you had that somewhere, right? Yeah, it's on. Right. Can't wait to see that. You'll also love. Right, oh you, my you, god! You can, you These can are all the up. names right, of other can. movies that sound like fake yeah, movies. By the, the way, the right. This is yeah. a great new game for the show. I don't know if this has been played or isn't a, a, a game that exists currently, but alternate title where we basically yeah try to find the like what we were doing with uh, with there, devotion. So, so what it is is if you enjoyed this <laughs> flaming piece of cat shit. <laughs> You may also then enjoy these other flaming pieces of cat shit. Like yeah. it should say, if you enjoyed this movie, and then at the bottom it should be take a soldering iron to your eyeball. Yes, <laughs> but yeah. instead it's suggesting other movies. If now, you also blow it up a little, if you can't so believe can this star Sorry. was in this movie and <laughs> and did this, then you're not going to believe that Whoopi Goldberg did Burglar. All right. So the first movie is Heart Condition. Which is, is that Bob? Bob Hoskins, it looks like, or Bob Danny Hoskins. DeVito. And yeah, Bob Hoskins looks like a, yeah, it looks like a twins poster. It does. It and looks who, like Hoskins and Denzel, that, but I want to say Robert Townsend. 
That's I it's think Denzel. it's Den- Denzel Washington. Let's go. That nice. is that is at ten percent with the critics. Then it goes to Whoopi Goldberg's uh, Burglar. It was one of the worst movies ever. Well, maybe second only to Whoopi Goldberg's Jumping Jack Flash. Um, that's twenty percent, twenty seven percent. Then it's Cuffs. That was cool the, poster though. Very cool. That's Christian, Christian Slater, Slater. I think at the peak of Christian Slater. Slater yeah. Cool Christian Slater. Cool Christian Slater. That's Cuffs with a K. <laughs> uh, then it goes to Flashback, and then it goes to Wildcats. So the the point is, is what I would like to say to the Rotten Tomatoes people is. Why don't we offer up some good films mm. to trick these dumb people into watching some quality yeah. to see if we couldn't like when they take the inner city kids to the symphony? You know what I mean? <laughs> they don't take the inner city kids to an inner more part of the city. They take them to be exposed you try to improve to their culture. Life. Yeah. You know what I mean? This is just fucking giving the fat guy another donut. <laughs> Like this, this is like his IQ is going to get even lower. His yeah. movie IQ is going to be lower. How about we throw some Albert Brooks on there yeah. or some Woody Allen? Yeah. You know what I mean? See if we can raise the the, the tide that raises all boats if a little bit Go here. Denzel, go Training Day, go uh, Hurricane, you know? Yeah, I, I think if you – I started looking up this Denzel movie, Heart Condition, I think it's called. Hoskins looks like the boss of the guy he played in Who Framed Roger Rabbit, and, which he and, should have won an Oscar and, for. And, and I think in Europe it was called like Black Ghost or something. I mean, you got to you got to read the slug line of Heart Condition from I don't know eighty eight ninety one nineteen ninety nineteen ninety. Oh, so same, same year, same year. So I have the log line here: A racist cop receives a heart transplant from a black lawyer he hates. Who returns as a ghost to ask the cop to help take down the men who murdered him? So this black would, ghost. This would be like if, was the original title for the Patrick Swayze movie too. <laughs> black ghost would have been great. Or, or I think title for I the think it was. I think in Europe they pitched it. Is that they got it right? So wow, this would be like if Mark Furman got Johnny Cochran's heart. Yeah. Wow. This is this is the premise behind this. Pile of crap that's getting ten percent. What's the tagline? Rotten Tomatoes. Can we see the tagline? Every poster. every partnership has its problems. <laughs> I mean, heart yeah. condition. No shit. That sounds like a. I kind of do want to see this film, but yeah. for, for ironic reasons. Our now, forty solid, uh, solid length. Is there an alt? You know how they will change the name of them for like for Asia. Or, right. or Europe or right. whatever, because right. they don't have this saying here or there or whatever it is. I swear it's one called like Black Coast or something. Anyway, what you do guys think? are with me philosophically that these people need to be recommended a higher quality film. Right. Yes. If you enjoyed this. Do you think they have like for Ghost Dad? Like, what do you think that's called? Like, oh, that's a Bill Cosby. Right. What do you think they call that overseas? Like Rape Ghost or... <laughs> Spain, they called it Black Ghost. Black yeah, Ghost, okay. That's, that's what yeah. I found in my travels as well. Oh, another tagline. Together, they're making a cardiac arrest. Oh, sweet. A cardiac Jesus. arrest. Yeah, you got to give it up for whoever. I hope the guy who wrote that is getting some sweet yeah. snapper somewhere. That's Sorkin. That's Sorkin. Uh, <laughs> People don't know this. He wrote uh, poster slogans, which now, is playing the Troubadour on Saturday. The guy who, The guy who wrote... Cadillac Man is also the name of a disgraced chef who's been me too. Ken chef Boyardee. <laughs> Ken yeah. Friedman. Oh, that deserved more. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Chef Boyardee getting me too is how that auto biopic <laughs> should start. All right. Who is it? Ken Friedman? Yeah, I think it's right. yes. so Ken, So now I'm Googling in Ken Friedman, and all I'm getting is a chef that's been me too which I know is traumatic for the women, but as a viewer of Cadillac Man, I guarantee I was every bit as traumatized as you were at the hands of this chef as I was at the hands of this writer who made this goddamn horrible (laughs) film. But then I thought, oh, good for him. But then I thought, well, wait a minute. What if somebody Googled Adam Ray and a whole bunch of just stories about a a sex addicted chef came up again. Like, chef Boyardee. Would that be kind what, of, the motherboat? That's how I say hello. <laughs> would that be? Would that be summer. rough on you? I, yeah. I, this guy. 
Maybe he is in movie jail after this bombed, and he was like, I'm going to fuck it. Uh, fuck it. I'm going to teach myself how to make manicotti and open my own Italian restaurant. And maybe it's, a, it's a, not a real common name, Ken Friedman. No. What is the chef story, though? Like, if you Google uh, He's him. notable for the Spotted Pig in L.A., and then um, while at the Spotted Pig with Mario Batali. Oh, In 2017, right. he was accused of sexual harassment, agreed to pay 11 former employees $240,000 and a share of the profits, and decided mm. to step away from the Spotted Pig. Hmm. That wasn't the guy whose wife claimed when they were getting divorced that he liked to choke cats and masturbate. That was another chef Sharon Osborne was telling me about. Yeah, I don't know. It's a long story. <laughs> yeah. Batali has but a history. The names of- that come up when you do Ken Friedman are the chef, right? right. Yeah, he's, right. he's the more popular Ken Friedman. That's got to suck. I mean, you've worked with Robin Williams. He also... Yeah, you're known for this now. He was one of the three writers involved with the Shirley Cha-Cha Muldowney story, Heart Like a Wheel. Well, But judging from the writing he did on this, I don't think he did a lot of heavy lifting on that story because that was actually a decent movie. Quick uh, question. Mario Batali, you said he was there for the Ken Freeman Me Too debacle. Is Batali, does he have like a history of being like the wingman for Me Tours? I think or was he, he just there by happenstance? He got Me Too yeah. for Batali other. Batali did? Oh, yeah. yeah. Oh, so Batali, God, what is it with cookers? Dude, yeah. Cookers. Chefs. <laughs> 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 Daryl. I swear weed does not affect my brain. Uh, Daryl, yeah. What is it with these cooker people? Mm. <laughs> hey, 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 easy, Daryl. Sorry, sorry. Yeah. Chef. Mm. Yeah, you'd be right if you were talking about roofers. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Because they don't really have another name for that. Well, we roofers is not oh, the term we appreciate. No, right. It's actor with power abuse. Mm. The che- the <laughs> the chef accused of choking cats. Oh God! While masturbating is a guy named Will a Janian or something. Do you think he tried to pass it off in the kitchen as like some sort of like term where he was like, "I'm gonna go choke the cats again," like right. where he was really doing, but he was trying to tell his staff yeah. like, "That's my code for I'm gonna go load up the tomato." You know, gun or yeah, whatever chef. they're doing in Ratatouille. I don't know. Yeah, I don't know if he did it because it was basically his wife filing for divorce. So, And she used this in the divorce like he's choking cats? Uh, so says Sharon Osborne. I'm wow. seeing shaking cats and like more than choking. I'm not using the phrase choking. Okay. Are you saying while masturbating, though? <laughs> so he, whether you're shaking or choking a cat, if your other hand's on your cock, yeah. we'll be right back. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, yeah. Wife allegedly walked on, in on the husband <clears throat> strangling one of the cats while masturbating. Okay. Alleged <laughs> strangling. Alleged. Choking. Don't you, first off. Okay, that's way different. That's one of those wait for it stories. You know what I mean? Where she calls her friend. It's like, I'm leaving Will. We're getting divorced. Why? Because I walked in and he was masturbating. <laughs> well, I've caught my husband. Yeah. You didn't let me finish. Let me finish. <laughs> let me finish. No, let me finish. Well, you guys have been involved, married for there? 14 years. <laughs> I know that my Stanley masturbates on it. I've seen his browser. Let yeah. me finish. <laughs> let me finish. You know what? I should have reversed the order. Yeah. I should have said walked in while he was choking a cat Oof. and masturbating. Right. How, how, how much harder does that Andy was masturbating hit if it comes after he was choking a cat? It's, mm. the, it's the headliner to that sentence, so yeah. it's, it's going yes. last, and that's going to have more impact, I would assume. I'm harder. trying to like, think. Does it, if, does it cross, does it kind of cancel out choking cat because it's like you're thinking of that, but you're thinking of it also you know, in addition to at the same time? Right, let's put this in a sentence, and let's just pretend this thing got in front of a jury. You know what I mean? And I said, uh, my uh, Adam Ray was masturbating... While choking a cat. All right, let's try it this way. It's just like a spelling bee using Adam Ray in a <laughs> was choking a cat while masturbating. What, can, what is the definition again? Can you use the, <laughs> this is it a spelling bee? Yeah. Uh, all right. Onomatopoeia. <laughs> all right. I, I, I think... Master, I think you. I think we front load it with masturbating yeah. and then go choking a cat, and that's the mic drop. Yeah, uh, I, don't, I don't know. You I li- go because if you add while masturbating after any crime, then mm. it, it animal cruelty. Yeah, it changes. It changes it completely. It means he liked it. 
Mm-hmm. Like rather than oh, it just, wow. he just did it right. So, so we front load it with the cat. You, fr- you got to front load with. So the cat. it's almost like yeah, because you're right. If it's after you front load with the cat because it's and masturbating that makes yeah. it sound worse. He was, it was like string like cat. That's terrible. He was and he was jerking off. Yeah, because he loved it instead yeah. of like he was jerking off like a normal dude and a cat came in and tried to like put its paw on his ass so he choked the cat. <laughs> right. They're like, well, why didn't he stop masturbating while he was choking the cat? Let me finish. I did a. Yeah, and also it's a it's weird because it, it's a hard story to wiggle out of. You know what I mean? <laughs> yeah. Like where you're going, you're talking to your kids. You're like, first off, let me just put let me lay some context over this. Oh, you're yeah. the dad telling the kids yeah, I was, they found out. First off, stroking a cat. I don't oh. know when that comes. <laughs> I don't know when that becomes. Mom choking said you a were cat. beating off like no, really hard. Oh. no. You know I love tabbies. <laughs> Who I stroked the cat. Oh, and beat and choked your dick. No, no, no. Your oh. mom said choking. I said stroking. Well, which one is it, Dad? You know, stroke is an unfortunate term as as well. Let's just say I was petting the cat. Okay. And uh, I was airing out my sack while petting the cat. And What does that mean? Well, you know how much I love cats, right? Sure. I got a little aroused, <laughs> but that's the end of it. I mean, that's as far as it went. So who's taking me to school in the morning? <laughs> uh, first off, remember we hired the cat, Whisper? <laughs> Don't listen to that guy. He's a fucking liar. He will lie. He is a lying sack of shit. That cat, Whisper, we hired... He's driving to school, but don't don't listen to the cat whisper. Okay. He doesn't know shit. Okay. He claims he had a detailed conversation yeah. with our cat. Gave you some bad intel. Do not even begin. <laughs> then he goes and rats me out with the old lady. That's why she came home and caught me. Do not listen to the oh, cat whisper. Yeah, no, this guy sucks. He claims. He communicates with cats. The cat said a lot of super unflattering things about dad. I heard. He then spills the beans to mom, who comes in and catches me in the bathroom, uh, being very affectionate in a very appropriate way with the cat (laughs) while airing out my sack, and then spins this yarn, okay? He's trying to fuck mom. Uh, You know what? I'm even thinking about having somebody else drive you to school other than the cat whisperer. But if he does pick you up in his van where he falsely advertises he can communicate with cats, you don't listen to a word that guy has to say about this cat. Okay. And anything he told you about daddy. Okay. Understood? Especially if he tells you that the cat was choked while daddy masturbating. Don't even... Don't even believe 10% of that. I still don't even know what masturbating is. <laughs> oh, okay, oh. good. Fair enough. You know what? I'm going to get someone. I'm going to call an Uber. Is masturbating where you come in your pants while you're asleep? Uh, you know, if there's enough, you know, let's. this is inappropriate. Well, because I had a dream about oh, that's mom's called a wet friend dream. Pam. Pam, yeah. You know the one you see all that work done on her face? Don't listen to her either, son. <laughs> well, Pam told me 9-11 was an inside job. Yeah, that's why. Oh. And if she says anything about me and the cat. She closed with that. <laughs> Don't listen to her. <laughs> I did a chef accused of her. Him and his wife both filed restraining orders against each other. The kitchen gets stressful. Is that their excuse? Uh, he oh. claimed <laughs> she was the one who abused the cats. And that he is the victim of long-term abuse. So it got ugly. I did a man show bit. Oh, God. Involving using a cat for something. Mm. Can we find it? And my pants were down. <laughs> I never, I haven't thought about this bit in wow. years. What is it? Dude, it I a, mean. It was, a man, it was a man show bit where I was on the toilet. And there's a cat and there was a. Porn star, no, mm. big bust pinup girl, Danny Ash was in it. And I can't, it was, I think we do a segment. Let's see, we do a man show bit segment called like, oh God, according to Adam or, or troubleshooting with Adam or something. It wasn't a three, it wasn't a was long a bit. The premise was I was, on the toilet at like my mother-in-law's house mm. and we're out of toilet paper. And that's 
And, and they, I don't want to step on the joke, but there was also. Well, but I mean, the like the according to Adam, what was the? I don't, it'd just be like tips or or something. Okay. I, I can't remember, but I, I remember shooting it. I think I shot it with Bobcat. Oh, and um, I think there was a porn star named Danny Ash who was in it, and and there was also a joke that Jimmy wouldn't allow. Wow. He said, I draw the oh, line. Did that happen often? Veto power. No, what would happen is we we do a bit. Some One of our fucking insane writers would be like, um, hey, I got this really funny premise where Jimmy is sexually attracted to his mom and ends up fucking her. And Jimmy would go, I'm not going to do that. Yeah. And I'd go, I'll do it. <laughs> <laughs> so got we shot it. a whole bit where I fucked my mom. But Jimmy was like, Jimmy's, you know, Quasi religious and he yeah, has some respect <laughs> yeah. for himself and, and his mom. Other probably people's watch family. The show. Yeah, and I remember, I remember very clearly. I was working on the bit, like I was sitting at my desk in the man show office, and I was working on the bit. And my mom called me at my desk, and I picked up the phone, and Jimmy and Daniel, Danny Two Sheets, we were all we always share an office. We're all in the room together, and I was like, I was just working on this bit about fucking my mom you know and so my mom picked up and i was like oh hi mom and you know daniel and jimmy are starting to laugh you know i was just uh just working on a just doing a bit with you in mind or something and she goes she goes really and i go yes it's what kind of bit is it i said it's an homage to you mother and she was like okay and we hung up the phone and then like a week later i saw her for dinner and she went i looked up the meaning of the word homage and I was so flattered. Aww. <laughs> oh <laughs> my God. But thankfully, no one in my family had basic cable or supported me in any way through viewership. Never so saw I it. was I was free to do whatever I Your family never watched uh, the man show. No. They never had the box set, they never watched it, they didn't have cable. Interesting. They, didn't, they never they've never watched anything I've done. So I could say and do whatever I wanted Kinda great, all, the, actually. all the time. It's the same way that like I think any comic, whether you're two years in or twenty, isn't a giant fan of your family being there. It is you're just like, yes. I wanna rid the room of any no. thing to fuck with that my stifle you. thoughts. Yeah. Well, let me say this, Adam. It is awesome once you're thirty five and rich. It sucks when you're nine yeah. and want shit. <laughs> <laughs> and they bring oh, the sure. same attitude to you getting a big wheel as they do to supporting yeah. your basic cable oh, show, that's funny. which is a fucking yeah. no fly zone. 1000%. All right, we have the bit. I'll take a quick break. We got some news and other stuff, and we'll do it right after this. Tommy John. I'm wearing my Tommy John's right now. Oh, man. Summer means shorts, and it's pushing triple digits out there. Keep your ice cubes from melting with Tommy John. When I wear Tommy John, I do everything so much better because I'm so much more comfortable. Dozens of comfort innovations, breathable, lightweight, moisture wicking fabric with four times the stretch of competing brands helps keep you up to seven degrees cooler than cotton. That's a big difference. Over 20 million pairs sold, thousands of five-star reviews. Tommy John doesn't have customers they have fanatics. I will not wear anything but Tommy John. You And you won't either once you get into it. Best pair you'll ever wear. Or it's free. Guarantee. Am I right, Dawson? Get 20% off your first order right now at TommyJohn.com slash Adam. 20% off at TommyJohn.com slash Adam. TommyJohn.com slash Adam. See site for details. First, there's the Jordan Harbinger Show. The Jordan Harbinger Show, a different kind of sponsor for this episode, The Jordan Harbinger Show. Well, if you're a fan of fascinating podcasts and interesting people, you should definitely check this one out. There's an episode for everyone, no matter what you're into. Jordan talks with Scott Adams about persuasion in a world where facts don't matter anymore. Man, is he right? Or you go inside the dark world of wildlife trafficking. You'll always find something useful to apply to your own life, like routine changes to boost productivity or slight mindset tweaks to change how you see the world. Jordan's a good guy. We've had him on uh, many times. I know the man well, and he's worth a listen. We enjoy the show, and we know you will, too. So you can search. The Jordan Harbinger Show, that is H-A-R-B as in boy, I-N as in Nancy, G-E-R, on Apple Podcasts, Spotify, wherever you listen to podcasts. 
All right, Adam Ray is here. You can, uh, by the way, find me in Portland this weekend at Helium, Friday and Saturday, four shows, so come on out and say hi. Uh, Idaho sold out, so that's good. Good for you. Um, Adam Ray's got shows all over the place, and you should go to Big tour. AdamRayComedy.com. All the way through the end of the year, funny. and then I'll be doing some dates yeah, with no. Sal Volcano and uh, Matt Reif in the fall, too. Um, there's one thing I want to plug. It'll be on my YouTube in two weeks, but I did a Dr. Phil live at the comedy store with Bill Burr as my guest. Oh, oh I saw really? pictures of that. It was fucking awesome. bonkers. Yeah. He, I, you know, got in the full, uh, makeup like I've done on the show here and, and, uh, did an opening monologue and had Gary Cannon. who used to warm up the Dr. Phil show, like wow. come out and open it. And at the end be like, guys, there's a taping of the Dr. Phil show. So when he comes out, I really need you to go nuts. So people went <laughs> fucking bonkers. And then, uh, did a monologue, did some crowd work. Then Jeremiah Watkins, uh, pretend to be, I was like, you know, my fortes are troubled teens, kids who don't have it figured out, but also are just little cocksuckers. <laughs> and so he screams from the back, you know, what up, bitch? He's in all goth. And <laughs> he comes up, we fuck around, and then bring out Burr. I'm like, this, this next guy deals with rage. He screams at people to make himself feel better. Please <laughs> welcome, you know. And then Bill does a set, and then we uh, interviewed for about an hour. And um, cutting that together now, be on my YouTube. So subscribe to that in, uh, I believe, two uh, in two Fridays from, from now. I will be watching. Yeah. Uh, all right, Danny Ash and the bit. Now, I don't know what the bit, I can't remember what the bit was, was called. Oh, my God. But um, we'll play it. It's me sitting on a toilet. By the way, love the magazine oh, title. Yeah. But. Just so easy. Danny. Oh, you are so hot. What page you on? 47. Oh, oh you are hot. You are so damn hot. Mm, you're pretty hot, too. Danny? Who else would it be? Oh my god, you think I'm hot? Oh yeah, I watch the man show all the time. That Jimmy, he's a hairy turd. <laughs> yeah. But you, you're a stone fox. Oh man! Oh, listen, we, we gotta get together sometime. I can't wait for some time. I'm wet and I'm coming over right now. Oh. Oh, this is the best day of my life. <laughs> Disappear from the right. Oh, 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 oh. <laughs> Baby, this is a dream come true. Oh, thank you. Thank you. <laughs> oh, Christ, it stinks in here. Huh? Oh, Flower God, down. I think I'm going to puke. But I'm out of here. Oh, no, 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 don't go. Danny, I got, got matches. Don't oh, come back. Come back, I got matches! Go! It's better! It's like, it's springtime! Damn you, Arby's! Damn you to hell! Oh. No cat, though. No cat. No, it was another bathroom bit. <laughs> oh my God. I confused my two bathroom bits. <laughs> I've never, I've seen that in 20 something years. I've, I've completely forgot about, it. I, I remember being in the bathroom and there was a cat and it would have had a title, like what would Adam do or yeah. something, something like that. Um, but that was, yeah, maybe filmed on the same day or something too. Like the... <laughs> I don't have that much oh. energy. Uh, yeah, there's God, it was a man show bit. I was on the bathroom, on the toilet, and it involved a cat. That's about all. Hmm. That's all I got. And I included, I just wove in Danny Ash because I remember her coming into the bathroom. But it's a separate potty bit. Safe to say if a show's called The Man Show, there's multiple, multiple. bathroom bits. Oh, my God. Yeah. Jimmy's <laughs> best bit that I, I always loved, he would do it on the radio. I think he did it with the, I did it with the Man Show, too, is he would just go park himself on a public toilet. Like you just like sit in the middle of like a three, three yeah. stall or, you know, he just like sit there at the, I don't know, at the airport or anywhere, just anywhere. And he'd just be sitting there with the door closed and he would just wait until somebody took the stall yes. next to him. And he'd just go, how's it going? And there'd always be like a long <laughs> pause. And then the person would always answer. They would always go, oh, going okay. And then my. he would just start chatting with them, you know? That's and at so some funny. point, he'd get to the point where he'd take like a 
plate of brownies and slide it under <laughs> yeah. the... You got to find Jimmy talks to people in the bathroom. Wait, this is what he's done a, on his show. Yeah, It was a Kevin and Bean bit oh, so that great. we used to do. He used to do it way back on Kevin and Bean. I'm pretty sure he did it in the man show. And it was just... I don't... It was the simplest bit ever, but it was so funny oh, because funny. he would always just start with how's it going and there'd always be a like a five mississippi yeah. pause <laughs> but it was before cell phones so yeah. people now people think you're on the phone right right there's some sort of unspoken etiquette in the bathroom i think at the urinals in the stalls where you're just not making chit chat i don't know if right. girls are doing it like i like your shoes mind your business bitch like if they're but guys usually are like full stream ahead you know there needs i, I yeah you're but, no small but the bathroom, about I was just talking about, I was talking about on this show years ago, but when I did Dancing with the Stars, there needs to be a, 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 an etiquette, like a telephone etiquette. When I was doing Dance with the Stars, they had a little bathroom off the stage, sort of in the back for like crew guys and stuff. And one day I just walked into it and it was like using the urinal. And as soon as I walk in, I hear the dude from the stall, I hear him go, uh, how's it going? And then I just go, Going good, you know. And then I we paused, and I said, "Getting paid to take a shit, not too not too shabby." Because he was a crew guy, and he was yeah. taking a shit, and he goes, "I'm on the phone." <laughs> I was like, <laughs> <Yeah>. "Oh." <laughs> so I've gotten burned at Laurie's, the uh, prime rib place, by walking in. There's oh, a big yeah. b- brother was like at the urinal. Like, How's it going? Like right when I walked in, it's like going great, man. Prime rib, and he's on the fucking phone. Yeah. We need new. What do you guys? We, we need new words. For how's it going? There needs yeah. to be a phone version yeah. of, of you talking to yeah. someone. You cannot be used in bathrooms. Make it clear, anymore. yeah. Um, um, how do you, what do you guys do when, like, because co- comedy clubs, not every green room has a bathroom. Yeah, and they so just go to the public They one. just see oh, you on stage, yeah. and then you have to go in with that a general pop. That happened to me at, at a show once, and I went in there, and the guy was next to me, and he goes, he goes, Adam Ray. Right next <laughs> and they're to me. drunk. Yeah, hammered. And he goes, and he looks down. And sometimes when people talk to me at the urinal, in general, whether it's uh, at a show or not, I'm not a giant fan. I'm like, hey, I would love to continue this conversation about uh, – Jerry O'Connell and right. uh, and Dan Cortez and are they brothers or not? Right. Um, <laughs> yeah. You know, with our dicks in our pants. And this guy literally looks down at one point. And he goes, "Is it just me?" Or sometimes people talk to you in a way where they want you. It, you have to say something. It's weirder if you just sit in silence or stand in silence. And he goes, "Is it just me or these urinals uh, uh, super big?" And I go, "I go." And, I, <laughs> and there's a pause. And I go, "If I'm quiet, it's weirder." So I go, ah, "I'm sure you're fine." And then he was like, "Thanks, man." I go. Just complimented his cock, and uh, he set me up for that, and there was yeah. no way around it. We have the bit. Now, the other bathroom bit that I haven't thought about in 20 years. This is what would bit. Adam do? What would Adam do? I kind of remember that part, yeah. Go presents, what would Adam do? You're visiting your mother-in-law. She's out of toilet paper. Do you, A, use your favorite magazine? Or B, use your sock. Oh my God! <laughs> what would Adam do? There's the cat. <laughs> oh, he's still there. Oh my! It's not even implied. You're actually doing it. <laughs> oh my God! And it ends at the perfect time. I mean, yeah. picked up a huge Persian cat. <laughs> yeah, that was a big cat. cat. <laughs> that cat did not want to go behind. It was fighting with me when I was running around to wipe my ass with this cat. You picked the perfect cat puppet because the face was there was that a lot was of a real expression. Cat. Real, that was a real yeah. cat. A real cat. And then you just watch yeah. its paw. Oh, do it back I didn't see it move. How a little. dare you accuse me of using a, a cat puppet? <laughs> <laughs> and by the way, that would have been a viable excuse for the chef. <laughs> Honey, that's a cat puppet. What am I, weirdo? <laughs> I was joking. <laughs> you think I'm going to jerk off to a real cat? Yes. I went down to the puppet store. <laughs> I mean, you show oh, it. that looks like a puppet. And wait, <laughs> hey, I stand by my accusation. That is a puppet cat. That's cat puppet. Look Sorry. Paw. Nope. It's fake, cat. <laughs> fake cat. Fake cat. Fake news. This is not a real cat. It's a, it's a cat puppet. That it is, looks uh, like a, it looks like fake. Your your head is in its the back of its head, dude. It That's does puppet. look like a fake it cat. Does look like a fake so cat. big. Yeah, you your your hand is in the back of its head, and you're moving that paw. Yeah. No, it's a real wow. cat. Okay. I remember they, those the are fucking, freakish eyes. They, the fucking chick. It was the cat wrangler. I was like, what do you want to do with our cat? Let's go pick it up. Just, I'm gonna hold oh, it. She didn't even know that's no, even better. You, 
Fuck. Yeah, you asked for We could yeah. never fucking tell anybody what we were doing. Like the old woman. Wow, who, so even then, just because the times were different, still people were like, dude, that's fucking The berserk. old woman who was playing my mom who I was fucking, she didn't know she was playing my mom. <laughs> By the way, that is gonna, a great piece of info to her. dissect. Any old person, like we did a... <laughs> she read, read the script and she's making small talk. How long have I have we been mother and son? Oh, You're like, yeah. shut up. <laughs> Yeah, we couldn't tell half the people what we were doing. <laughs> Who they were playing. They, they wouldn't have gone. They wouldn't have done it. Uh, yeah. Oh, we have Kimmel in this bathroom interview. That's from Mancha. Awesome. That's my favorite. We just go to a real public bathroom. Oh, this is on the Mancha. This is Fallbrook, Fallbrook Mall. Mall. <laughs> God, walks in. I can't believe you keep the cameras in a bathroom. I know. It's, uh, I, it's I don't so think illegal, you're doing it. Right? Yeah. Oh my god. She didn't have to sit in the bathroom and wait. <laughs> All right. Oh I'm, my god. Pants are down. This is so funny. How's it going in there? <laughs> hey, fella, how's it going? <laughs> uh, yeah. Doing pretty good. <laughs> What'd you have for lunch? <laughs> I didn't have lunch. May, may I recommend the rotisserie chicken? <laughs> yeah. I got going right now. May you I got recommend it. the rotisserie? <laughs> How's it going? <laughs> He's got. You can guess my name. It <laughs> <laughs> uh, makes me laugh. I'll give you time. five guesses. <laughs> John. Uh, it's no, play. It's one. It's one. Josh. Josh. No, it's not Josh. Bill. No, not Bill. Not Bill. It's Colder. Three. You got two left. James. I'm sorry. What was that? James. James is absolutely <laughs> right. <laughs> I'm positive. People call me Jimmy, but my name is James. That is, that's astounding that you would guess that. What's he gonna give him? He's gonna give him something, right? And to congratulate him, please enjoy this plate of brownies. <laughs> you like, like some? There oh, you go. The plate. <laughs> You've got a gift, my friend. Go forth and share it with the world. I will. <laughs> Perfect kid. Oh my god, that made me laugh. That's it great, always dude. make me laugh that bit. Got to bring that back. That yeah. still holds up. <laughs> oh my god, the willingness of some people to just go. Yeah, I mean, again, it's weirder to sit in silence. Yeah, the bit that Jimmy wouldn't condone. Bobcat loved it. It was my joke, which is like, oh, I think. All right, we're gonna do what would Adam do? And it was out of toilet paper again. <laughs> and all, all there was no cat in this one. All he had, like, in one hand, I'm holding up my Jugs magazine, you know? And I'm yeah. like, do I tear the page out of this? And then I reach over and pull a Bible out. <laughs> and I'm like, oh, yeah. And I tear, tear the Bible page out. And Jimmy's like, you can't do that. <laughs> and I go, I think it's funny. Bobcat thinks yeah. it's funny. <laughs> right. So we did have certain limits. You yeah, know, the cat, yeah, yeah. cat wiping was... We didn't draw the line there. So funny. Speaking of the man show, I got the man show boy coming in next week. Oh. So you guys can reconnect. MSB is coming mm -hmm. in. All right. We should take a break and we'll come back and we'll do the news right after this. Let me tell you about Turo Innovative. It's the world's largest car sharing marketplace with Turo. You can book any car you want, wherever you want, from a community of local hosts. Browse a huge selection of vehicles for just about any occasion or budget. Book an SUV or a minivan for a family road trip, a pickup truck for some errands, or even test drive an EV. Every trip is backed by liability insurance. Terms, conditions, and exclusions apply. Find your drive. Forget your boring rental cars at Turo, T-U-R-O dot com. Viator experiences are what people love most about travel. I mean, God. 
taking my son fishing in Alaska. That was so amazing. I'll never forget it. Viator, it's a website and app for booking travel experiences like seeing Stonehenge or a walking tour of Rome. Over 300,000 bookable experiences in 190 countries. Millions of real travelers reviews. So you have the information you need to book the best activities for your trip. With Viator, there's always flexibility and support with free cancellation, payment options, and 24-7 service. So let's get out there and experience life, shall we? Download the Viator app now and use the code Viator10. Get 10% off your first booking. One app, over 300,000 experiences you'll never forget. Do more with Viator. It's time to check Adam's voicemail. Ace, once again, you're always right. Last night, I made me a peanut butter jelly sandwich to take with me today. And after being in my golf bag for four hours, I remembered that PB&J, and it was the best thing ever. Get it on. You can leave us a message at 888-634-1744. Only sandwich that gets better with time. Can't say that about egg salad, tuna salad, Diablo sandwich. There's no other sandwich that gets better with time. Than what? PB&J? Oh, yeah. It's... I. Recently had a PB and J bagel, I think, at the airport, and it. Uh, I almost missed my flight because I was um, ejaculating. Mm, yeah, I saw that Sorry, on TMZ. Trying to figure out a way to end that story. <laughs> Choking a cat. He's violating But it was the that bagel. good. Is my point. Yeah, it was so good. Yeah. If PB and J ever needs a, a boost in sales, but it's almost like Oreo. You just they don't need commercials. You never see like. When Billy came home from school, I don't know what commercial this is, but you know where he eats a PB and J, and then just to remind so us how good they are. I've you had just one know in the week, yeah. yeah, yeah. All right, we got some news. Some extra. Yeah, so Twitter is mm-hmm. has been rebranded. Yeah, it is now called X. Oh, uh-huh. it happened, huh? It, mm-hmm. It's happening. Yeah, the the bird logo's gone from the website. He's feeling that thread. X dot com has been bought and now leads to what Twitter is. X dot com. X dot com. Weird. Yeah, mm-hmm. I mean, Elon loves X, right? The Model X, SpaceX. Yeah. Like he loves he loves the X. X dot com X. sounds like a revenge porn. <laughs> it website. sounds like a porn. It uh, does. Yeah, exactly. Mm-hmm. Like, I know. Do you think when you see the the letter X, do you think of X Men like triple X rated or like um, X all caliber? All the above now. Yeah. yeah. But yeah, mm. yeah, X is also uh, obviously the, the porn letter too. So, so we're done with the bird. We're done with the bird. Even e- e- Elon has been quoted saying we're cut- we're cutting the Twitter logo off the building with blow torches, and soon we shall Jesus. bid adieu to the Twitter brand and gradually all the birds. And mm. uh, what they're doing, the Twitter CEO Linda Yaccarino, mm-hmm. she's been quoted saying X is the future state of unlimited interactivity oh centered in audio, video, messaging, payments, and banking, creating a global marketplace for ideas, goods, services, and opportunities. <clears throat> Powered by AI, X will connect us all in ways we're just oh, beginning fuck. to imagine. Yeah, Twitter was getting bad press, and they were like, we got to just fucking close the door on this. Yeah. Is and- it? Is it going to work? I mean, what I'm saying is, is, like, they'll do that thing where they'll, take a street they'll take like hoover street was changed to martin dr martin luther king boulevard in 1979 and no one does it no one calls it that you know what i'm saying do you know i blew drew's mind i believe mccarran airport in vegas is harry reed airport yeah. Wow. Uh, no it's one weird. says I'm landing at Harry Reid. No, they just I go, I'm going McCarran. to McCarran. Wow. Yeah. And Drew's mind was blown. He's like, <laughs> I, I've been to Vegas a hundred times. I was like, it's called Harry yeah. Reid Airport. I only know that's that because the, when I order an Uber, I can't type in McCarran now. Just, you would not. Yeah. So Drew didn't know. I mean, you would never know if you couldn't. But did you know the Bob Hope Airport in, uh, Airport in Burbank is actually the Bob Costas Airport? <laughs> did not know that. Yeah. It's, yeah. Just, it it kept was, it with, have, within the bobs, though. That's good. Yeah. Well, there was just like who's... well, they're zero for three because 
there it was the Bob Hope Airport. Now it's the Hollywood Airport, yeah. and everyone just calls it Burbank. Always. Right. So it's like, we reject both your titles. <laughs> <laughs> We're not going with either one of your Please. titles. Yeah. We're calling it this. And I think people will call this Twitter for three to seven years, oh, yeah. right? Well, what's going to be the term for tweets now? We don't. Yeah, that's, it's unclear. X me? X at me? Or, like, yeah. what? or did you get X'd? Did? Mm-hmm. did you see my X? Did you see my X? Mm-hmm. Yeah, the, um, all, like, what, when the, another example is Crypto.com Arena. Mm-hmm. Right, like it, that's still weird to say. No, me. that'll never right. stick. That'll never stick, and, that not, and especially what's happening with right. all the crypto stuff. I don't see it landing. Right, but but yeah. So Twitter is now X, and they're he is going through with it. Has anybody wow. ever bought an arena and used their own name, Jack like, Murphy Stadium? Oh, fuck, awesome. But I'm talking even like <laughs> Jay Z Arena D-minus. or Tony D-minus. Robbins Ballpark. Well, Jack Murphy was a sports writer in San Diego. Right. And I don't... He didn't buy it, did he? No, but it's a pretty big pull to like go, this guy wrote for the San Diego Gazette or yeah. something. He didn't a fucking... Name a bunch. That's a big Maybe deal. Maybe a bench after him <laughs> in front of the... I got a bench to ballpark, yeah. It was Jack Murphy was a sports writer. Like, That's I don't know cool how, how good you could be at writing sports. You get the stadium name Like after. John Stamos Arena? You wouldn't go see the Lakers play there? I the shit out of that. Yeah. Beach Boys? We'd accept that in a second. Yeah. 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 Find out... Mario Lopez. Uh, I would go there too. <laughs> Arena, yeah. <laughs> Jack Murphy, which is Qualcomm now or something, but yeah. but Dawson Murph, was in San Diego. Murph, yeah. Jack Murph. Murphy was a sports writer, right? How did he get his? Did he must have been instrumental? He must have in known someone in the top or yeah, for the stadium 1000. or something. Were they panicked? By the time I got to San Diego, it was Qualcomm, and and we had the everyone could call it the Q. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So only a few of the old guys still called it the Murph. Uh huh. Um, but I will look into it and see how the hell that happened. Um, yeah, oh, is I'm it after- seeing on my screen that Jack Murphy was a sports writer. Hmm. <laughs> after Jack Murphy's death in, in 1980, San Diego Stadium was renamed to San Diego Jack Murphy Stadium by a 6 2 vote of the San Diego City Council. He wrote for the San Diego Union, which is a, you know, not a huge newspaper. I mean, it's not USA Today. Right. I, I mean, I was San Diego. I obviously was beloved, but he's yeah. like pretty fucking good. He's got a hell of a publicist. Like, yeah. hey, what do you want to do? You want to get on Kimmel tonight? Or No, no, no. No, no. I want a stadium named yeah. after It'll me. It'll save us all time. Yeah. I don't have to make multiple well, appearances. Why, why you, column? Jack? Because I like sports. <laughs> and if you and if you if you if you think it's not going to be me, I'm going to kick it in your snapper. <laughs> so a couple of things. First, there is a statue of him out in front of uh, the stadium now. And in 1960, he wrote a column for the union proposing the Chargers team to become a San Diego franchise because they were in L.A. at the time. So right. he uh-huh. brought so he brought the team over. Well, he didn't bring the team over. <laughs> he persuaded people. To bring the team. By the Listen, way, there's plenty. I, I could write a condom. <coughs> condom. I could write a column. Sorry. No. I could write a column that instincts. said it should be illegal for people to put ketchup on a hot dog, but it doesn't mean anyone would fucking right. do it or no. I was instrumental in We're that. not going to rename I'd hot like dogs to Adam do, Carolla's. I'd like to do it. By though. the way, so many uh, stadiums named Joe Robbie, remember in Miami, now named Hard Rock, Jack Murphy, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Uh, Brendan Byrne Arena in uh, New Jersey. Then you got just surnames only, Lambeau Field, Kauffman Stadium in Kansas City, Turner Field. Mm. Um uh, Robinson Field in St. Shea Stadium. That's a surname oh, yeah. only one. Griffith Stadium, Forbes Field, Ebbets Field. Way better uh, na- named after people, I think. Yeah, I agree. It's just a, it's cleaner. It is cleaner. Mm, yeah. But Bob then Ford, how, <coughs> how many of these guys own slaves? Uh, I mean, at a certain point, <laughs> yeah, certain point, they're going to get me too. We I, protect I, Jack <laughs> Murphy's statue. <laughs> I believe we could get any of those stadiums with rich white dudes' names on it. And we could just, I'd just go, he dropped some N bombs back in the day. He was inappropriate Out, yeah. with his assistant. Yeah. We could get him yeah. renamed. Yeah, I'm surprised all these people aren't trying to tear down Mount Rushmore. Yeah. Who That's are those the dudes again? <laughs> <laughs> um, I don't know. None of them have ever heard of there. Popo's Out. Yeah. <laughs> Popo's, well, how about this? How about the Mount Rushmore of Kevin Federline's? So yeah. if he's up there, who mm. else are we throwing up there with him? In the married, married up? 
I think the married up, but also the not even. I was about to say one hit wonder. I fucking yeah. would have kicked my own ass. But uh, guys of the Fetter line cut that have mm. tried to make it. Maybe had maybe are a part of the zeitgeist and the pop culture world. Like honey Boo Boo. Probably the guy yeah. who recorded the uh, Paris Hilton sex tape. Be oh. on there, right? Sure. Maybe the director of Two Girls One Cup. <clears throat> I think we gotta know his name at least. Wait, we gotta know I'd his name. The, I'd know say the, the cinematographer of Two Girls One Cup. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I get. Okay, what was that guy's Ooh. name? Good question. Yeah. Oh, I thought that guy was. He was pretty famous though. No, that, that that was the Girls Gone Wild guy, wasn't it? Oh yeah, what's we his name? Like Mike? Uh, he should go up there too. He should go up <laughs> no, there. No, I think Mike Lindell. No, who was that guy? <laughs> we're just talking about this guy for ten minutes. We'll Rob something. A, we'll figure his name the, the out. The cinematographer. No, the, the guy the girl who made go, Girls Gone, Gone Wild. <laughs> the DP. Uh, Do you guys wrong, know that Jack letters. Murphy was a sports writer <laughs> in the San Diego, the greater San Diego area? Fuck. Joe no. Francis. Joe, uh, Joe Francis. Wasn't Joe, Joe Francis involved with the Paris Hilton thing? Or am I making that? I'm sure. By the way, Joe uh, Francis Stadium. Can you imagine? I would go. <laughs> yeah. He's like, seventh inning stretch is also titty time. So he dresses as cheerleaders. <laughs> Rick Solomon. Rick Solomon. Yeah. Sorry. Oh, yeah. So Rick, oh, Rick Solomon, right. So right. Kevin Fairline, Rick Solomon, Joe Francis, <laughs> Lou Bega. <laughs> new, new Wild Lou Hogs Bega. 2024. You're, you wouldn't go see fucking Third Eye Blind at Lou Bega Arena. Yeah, I would go. Or Lou Bega Stadium. <laughs> I Pablo number five plays at the beginning and the end of every concert, game, or charity event. That song came on the other day when I was driving home from Ohio. Oh, man, and I was like, what a piece of stop shit. And Talk about dance. a guy that uh, just played around. Yeah. A I, lot of women. Mm-hmm. He was the original Cadillac man. He yeah, really was. Really Lou was. Bega. Yeah. Oh. God, I just, I always remember my interview with him from Loveline, the TV show. No way. Oh, yeah. Because <laughs> they talk about Erica and Monica and uh, Rebecca. I remember, I remember there's one thing that I'm good at. Well, actually, no. It's Lou I, Bega I karaoke. No, I have no ability because I, 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 I'm going to rephrase that. But. I, these bands would like come around the presidents of the United States love. of America and they sing lump. Yeah. And you love peaches it. and peaches. And the, and I was like, this is a novelty band. Like they're, they're not going to, we're not going to know For much sure. about them in 20 years. For and sure. I, I would label a lot of nobody. You could and, tell her, and yeah. Lou Bega, I mean, that song must've come out in 99, 98 or whatever I was doing. And I was on a big show on MTV. So we had access to the Bega boy and we, <laughs> And he was a guest. And I was thinking the back, I was thinking, this song sucks, this song sucks, yeah. this song sucks. And this is, you are the definition of a one hit wonder. You will never have another big hit. Song was the biggest thing on the planet. And and I said to him, but I tried to kind of not be that rude about it. But I, I said to him like, uh, now what? you know, you're going to want to strike while the iron's hot. You know, you really got a lot of momentum here, you know. And sure. and, what are you doing with it? And are you worried a little bit that uh, it may die down or something? And he just looked at me with all the confidence in the world and said, man, I got hits coming out the wazoo. This, <laughs> this fucking party's never going to end. And that's a good that's a good conversation to have with a young man. <laughs> like, hey, son, sit down. The party oh. will end. You may go Lou ba- Bega yeah. Yeah. at some point. <laughs> I don't know if it really has ended though, because this that song is still it, it is now part of '90s canon. I've said this before, but like they took a survey with a bunch of Gen Zers mm-hmm. of what songs from the '90s they they can name, mm-hmm. and that will eventually live on to be '90s canon. The top five songs are "My Heart Will Go On," "All Star" by Smash Mouth, "Macarena." Want to be by the Spice Girls and Mambo Number Five. Is so, it Macarena or Macarena? Macarena. I don't know. It's but, okay. But we'll, yeah, edit, it's, we'll edit this out. Oh, this uh, is a cover <laughs> loop. Mambo number five is a cover. What? Wait a second. Wait a Mind second. Next blown. thing you're going to tell me that Mary Kate and Ashley Olsen <laughs> both played Michelle in Full House. <laughs> <laughs> Holy so shit. Oh, is man. an instrumental mambo and jazz song originally composed and recorded by Cuban musician Damaso Perez Predo in 1949 and released the next year. German but singer it, Lou Bago sampled it. The original song released. Oh, it was, the lyrics, Lou Bago's German? Yeah, that, that's a big thing. There's a lot we'll to right back. My mind is officially blown. Someone give me a cat. I just shat my pants. Lou Bega's German. 
So yeah, that's put, a that's some Lyrics early cultural out. appropriation there. I mean, he would wear zoot suits and yeah. shit. He was at the Klan meeting, now that I think oh, about it. Oh, my God. Uh, that's bonkers. Is his name so even Lou Baker? No, it's got to be like Paul Sanders. Paul Strudeldorf. <laughs> He's from Temecula. Sure. David. David? David what? David what? <clears throat> Lou Bega and... David Lubega? All right. David All right, Lubega. I'm back. I'm back on board. <laughs> David so. Lubega? It's like Lu- David Lubega Bollum's or something. Wait, what? No. Put it up on the screen. <clears throat> oh my god. He's German? This is so much appropriation. Yeah. He ripped off the he Cuban the band. Yeah. He ripped off sucks, a, a nation. Uh, I got a real pro I got a real beef with Bega. <laughs> yeah. Oh, Dave, oh, Lou Bega is one word, like Lou Bellamezzi. Bega. David Lou Bega Bellamezzi, yeah. I mean, you can't be Bellamezzi, right? Not in this climate. Oh, my God. It's David all, Lou Bega. It's all a lot. My mind's, yeah, everything's God, a lot. Everything's, if this, oh, man, I'm seriously having a fucking <clears throat> life spiral I'm right now. I'm questioning a lot. I'm I questioning need to a lot, see, man. I need to see the video for this because <laughs> I, I interviewed the man and thought he came from Havana or something. I right. had no idea that Lou Bega was a German guy. This is he fucked had up, the man. little must, the, yes. no, oh, the Hitler that mustache. That would have been a, no. He had the cool Cuban. Uh, tr- I played trumpet in Miami. Like yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, they yeah, had the yeah, hat. Yeah, the he Zana. thought he was like <clears throat> in the rhythm section of the Miami Sound Machine with yeah. Gloria Stevan yeah. or something like that. So. Moved to Miami, Florida as a teenager. He probably had a nice, uh, you know, stretch of of just crushing it where he was making public appearances and people were going nuts, right? Maybe not going nuts, but like in the club, they put it on Mambo Number no. 5 and be like, oh, we got David Lubeka Balamezzi in the house. And right. then he fucking yeah. stands up and does a weird pose and everyone, you know. It's weird that his wiki does say... He's a German singer. They could just said singer. It's weird that they have yeah. to lean in on the German thing. Well, we got to see 20 seconds of the vid now. Yeah, I want to hear how he <laughs> talks. I don't think I have any idea of how he sounds. He was born in Bavaria. Oh, it's all a lie. That's another conversation I'm going to have with my kids. <laughs> Everything's a lie. Santa's I, not real. Lou Bega's not real. Lou Bega's <laughs> not real. I was not. You love is rigged, you know? Mm. It's just I have that same level of disappointment in... His, yeah, his wrestling. Like, his yeah. mother is <laughs> Wait, Italian, <laughs> and his father's Ugandan. And he grew, grew up in oh. Germany. Wow. I guess. Well, hey, and man. Italy as well. And Italy. Look, nobody. Uh, there's no path to make it uh, over here in the states. So I guess you know if you if you did it like <laughs> as much as you want to trash the Kardashians, which I do. Uh, they 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 figured out what we were into and they fucking sold it to us. Skims was just valued at four billion dollars, and Come they're on. gonna start making them for dudes. Yep, men skims. Yeah. What? Yeah. Yeah. I'll Fuck. give you. A- <laughs> I fucking. I will knock it till I try it though. Yeah, I guess. Yeah. I don't know. You really- Fuck, dude. I just Here we go. hate that family so much. Do you hate them or are you jealous? Oh, yeah. I'm not actually jealous. I think, well, look, I, I hate's a strong word. I appreciate the level of, of um, again, recognizing that there's an audience. and They're capitalizing yeah, on- for sure, because- Society. Yes. <laughs> Pop culture. Um, I guess when I see- them get upset about certain things. Maybe that's when I get irked and perturbed, mm-hmm. which is a new podcast I'm starting about irked the Kardashians. And irked, yeah. and perturbed. Yeah. irked and perturbed also sounds like, like... Like when Kim, she recently, like in one of the newer episodes, she she does a talking head where she's complaining about um, her sister's wedding in Italy. And she's like, she copied my wedding. She got mm-hmm. Yeah. Also, didn't they like both not have a real pregnancy? I don't know why like that even was like, oh, you're fucking, you don't even care about actually having the bait, like that whole pregnancy process. I weirdly like judged that in the moment where I was like, <laughs> oh, you just want to be a mom for the photos I, on IG, yeah. I almost feel like. I don't know. Maybe they're great people. <laughs> <laughs> Earth and perturbed out every Sunday from 2 to 2.15. Uh, ass crack and back sack will be <laughs> doing <laughs> doing overnights over there. All right, what else we got, Max? All right, Jamie Foxx broke his silence mm. over the weekend with an Instagram video where uh, 
he just spoke into uh, the camera, kind of giving mm-hmm. an update on what was going on. He said, like, look, I know a lot of people are trying, were waiting to hear from me and wanted updates, but you know, to be honest, I didn't want you to see me like that. I wanted you to see me laughing, mm-hmm. having a good time, cracking jokes, partying, whatever. And mm-hmm. um, I didn't want you to see me tubes running out of my mouth. So I did, that's why I didn't put it out there. But here's some of the video. It's, it, it's like three minutes long, but here's some of it. By being quiet, sometimes things... You know, get out of hand. People saying what I got. Some people said I was, I was blind. But as you can see, uh, as you can see, the eyes are working. The eyes are mm-hmm. working just fine. Uh, said I was paralyzed. I'm not paralyzed. Uh, but I did go through. I went to hell and back. And my road to recovery uh, had some potholes as well. But um, I'm, uh, I'm, 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 I'm coming back, and uh, I'm able to work. So I want to thank. Uh, Oh, the people that let me work. Yeah, so. Yeah. He, he looks good. I mean, I yeah. have a lot of questions. I well, totally respect do. him not sharing. We do live in this like day and age where people are just like, what happened to you, man? Yeah, why you deserve to know. Yeah. You yeah. post on Instagram, so why don't you post? Like, we follow you. So now people expect, like, give me every detail. Just, sorry, I threw it in my mouth. Uh, of your day-to-day. And uh, I, I dig that he's keeping it close to the vest, but also... I don't know. Like, I am like, well, what the fuck, medic? Like, you're good, I guess, is all we should care about. But I don't know. Is it something that we should look out for? At some point, I'm right. like, what happened to you? So maybe. Can you prevent this from ha- happening to yeah, people? Yeah, totally. Like, or, it was something it- you ate. Like, if it was a hot pocket, <laughs> yeah. like a pepperoni <laughs> hot pocket <laughs> that said it was good to go and wasn't expired yet. Or it just a pepperoni hot pocket. <laughs> yeah, like, we need, get we need to know because yeah. I may eat one. Yeah. But, it, but I, I agree. We've gotten. Too pushy. Spoiled. Yeah. You right. know, it's like it's like my any young man growing up today would just go, uh, geez, who's the hottest actress or who's the who, who who's your fantasy? You know, who is your who's your sexual fan? You're 15. Like, who do you want? Oh, like that girl from this or, or whoever. And then you can just pull your phone out and just Google, you know, the actress's name tits. Or whatever, and you'd see pictures. Yeah, you, there'd inevitably Bonkers. be pictures of stills from a movie or her a boyfriend or whatever. You might even get a full blown porn, like backyard sure. porn tape, out of it. You know, you go. Mm-hmm. We got too accustomed to too much and too much information. Like you don't need to know what's going on with everyone all the time, but we just got used to like pulling our phone out, going, "What the fuck? Where's what's going on with Jamie Foxx?" We lived How come ve- I don't know this? Yeah, we lived very comfortably for a, a nice stretch without having to know everything. Right. Could you imagine, though, I think about this all the time. When I was 15, <laughs> if there were like, if someone's like, yeah, there's a film of, uh, you know, Cheryl Ladd from Charlie's Angels. Yeah, there's a film of her fucking her boyfriend on vacation. I, my mind would have. Yeah blown out out of my ears yeah i would have been like holy shit yeah yeah oh yeah that's right yeah you were a wonder woman yeah you want to see her, what her tits look like outside the outfit if there's like yeah a ma- i would have gone sure. my head would have exploded <laughs> if marilyn monroe had a sex tape people probably would have lost their shit right well that she did have some nude shots oh, some nude shots yeah yeah i remember my grandpa had a poster of her up in his bathroom and I remember always like walking in there and being like, I mean, it really? was like, it was like, yeah, I mean, it was every bush. Should have wiped my ass yeah, with it. That's the cat. Yeah. <laughs> it was, it was uh, impressive. But I was like, wow, what a bold. And I remember walking out one day and being like, you know, again, this was penis and tits cake. So I was like, Grandpa, we have the, I was like, <laughs> me and your poster have the same boobies. And he was like, what? <laughs> anyway, uh, RIP Grimps. Yeah. But he, um, great dude. Uh, yeah, I don't, uh, I don't get the full, we all want to know. Yeah, what's going on? But like, we I don't no. Know. But as I'm saying, like we've been spoiled because uh, also on another in another way, like whenever people say somebody died, <laughs> like if you go to the comments, everyone's first question like, "What happened? How did he die?" And like, please respect our privacy, and they don't want to say it. And it's like, well, we should know how he died, and it's it's rude to ask. Yeah, yeah. All do right, you, one more. Well, wait, last thing. Do you think there's going to be a? T- does he have a time frame? Do you think? Does there, is there a window where people are going to like to like if he just doesn't ever say anything? Is it going to become an issue? Well. I don't, I don't know. know. Like, he, I mean, he says he's, he, he's he has some movies coming out. He's gonna he's gonna start working but again. He just so never addresses it. Like that's he might, he uh, might, and he, that, that's his right. I guess. Yeah, yeah. He convinced Cameron Diaz to come out of retirement. Yeah. To shoot the movie yeah. and then has a stroke in the middle of shooting the movie and fucking leaves. Yeah, that's bullshit. <laughs> <laughs> 
Yeah. He literally, Justice for Cameron. Yeah. That better be a good movie. Maybe if, it's... If you're coming out of retirement, that was always... I remember uh, Jane Fonda, like, retired from acting, right. like, 15 years ago, mm-hmm. and then came out to do a movie, and it was called Monster-in-Law. Oh, with J-Lo. With J-Lo, and yep. it's like... Bitch, this That's piece of shit. Yeah. Brought, uh, how about Cadillac Man Two? I'll send the script over. <laughs> this is Robin Williams' son. Yeah, let's like, get. As soon as we you, get Dan Freeman out of jail, why would that? Why would a shitty, shitty rom com pull you out of retirement? Mm-hmm. Man, money, J Lo. She's got. Wasn't that Gene, she was Gene married Hackman's to, last movie? Was like a a weird rom com. She was married to Ted yeah. Turner. Oh yeah, she didn't need money. She no. couldn't need money. Yeah, she probably got the. She didn't pick dinner then, huh? Or no, mm-hmm. she still did. Yeah, she was good. All right. Half, um, are you only one more? Half a one. Half one. All right. So there's this cruise line that has apologized to its passengers because it pulls up. It's in the in, in the Faroe Islands, it's like between Scotland and Iceland. Uh, it pulls up to its location, and there were 78 pilot whales being slaughtered at that time in front of them. Did they have it coming? I. You know they they Wait. do this. What the fuck? Yeah, so they, they were slaughtering a bunch of whales. I guess they do this every year. But among the passengers were conservationists with ORCA, a marine life advocacy <laughs> group. Yeah, terrible. Dude, so, that's like when I took my nieces to uh, Finding Nemo 2, and we they had they sold fish sticks at a, like, a little fish oh, uh, place across oh, the street. No. And we brought them into the theater. <laughs> and I remember sitting there eating them, and one of my nieces at nine was like, Uncle Adam, it's isn't it kind of funny that we're eating fish sticks and we're watching a movie about fish? And I was like, "Yeah, this is fucked up." Yeah, <laughs> yeah, but yeah. So they to they, watch. Yeah, that sucks. To get together with your fellow marine life lovers. The picture we saw was a, the sea was red with mm-hmm. whale blood. Oh my god. That is yeah. So they do a hunt every year. Uh, the meat and the blubber is distributed among the islanders. What are they using it for? They they fe- it feeds people. Um, also, I guess the these these creatures contain dangerous levels of mercury. And is it a cultural thing? Like, are these like indigenous people or something? This doesn't feel like no. whitey. It, this feels like this was supposed to be a spring break fun cruise, and then yeah. I'm talking about the hunt. So oh, oh, gotcha. Yeah, yeah not, not the people on the ship. That feels pretty white. <laughs> <laughs> the the people in the Orca organization yeah. feel very white. But <laughs> it's, the, just, it's they say it's part of their sustainability efforts mm. to do this hunt every year. And and there's a uh, but are these like Irish or Scottish or something like what is there's got to be some tribe or some yeah. something behind this. It can't just be the. Um, Chick from the so Irish Spring named, commercial. David Lubega believes yeah, yeah, yeah. oh, <laughs> the charge. claims yeah. to be Irish. Yeah. Makes sense. Um, yeah, who? Then we got to figure out who's behind this. Yeah. Got to be something. Because it's 2023 and they're doing a whale hunt. Well, um, I don't know if this helps. I apologize if it doesn't. But these pilot whales look really similar to dolphins. Mm, wow. So, yeah. You think they think they're dolphins? Well, no, but I'm just saying, like, if you're thinking, like, that you're getting some belugas to, uh, that are on the beach, it, they, they're a lot smaller. They look, they're about the size of dolphins. Yeah. Who are who is the population of this island? I'm telling you, white people wouldn't stand for this. Faroe There'd Islands. be some fucking Karen who'd be out there with signs and her I mean, girlfriends they, and stuff. How could they not be white? It's like in Scotland and Iceland. That's as that's as white as it gets. Some tribe of indigenous <laughs> something. Population fifty uh, four thousand. So yeah, and they we do got... it. They do it um, with a hunting license. So there's some civility to it, mm-hmm. I guess. But yeah, mm-hmm. you have. To, and then they just distribute the the meat and the blubber evenly by all those who participate. Oh, but you got to participate. Yes, Is it like a delicacy? Yeah. See, that like... wouldn't that wouldn't work in the United States because we'd have a bunch of people who didn't participate who'd be like, "Where's my blubber, yo?" <laughs> yeah. And you'd be like, "You got to participate." Yeah, You're like, "Well, exactly. fuck that." <laughs> <laughs> I want my, you understand, my grandfather was oppressed by your tribe, and where's my fucking blubber? And we came by at six, we told you to get your harpoon, and you said no, you thought I was the Grubhub guy, and now you want your fucking blubber, we're not giving you blubber, and uh, here we would never, and then some politician with AOC would get involved and go, these are people who are told to do without blubber, they've been blubber-sized mm-hmm. and otherized. 
because of and they were unable and there's just people that are like confined to wheelchairs who can't go on whale hunts and they yeah. need blubber too <laughs> and it would turn into a whole fucking right, shit everyone show. Everyone gets their blubber. All right, what are what is the nationality? They're of in the, the kingdom of Denmark. The, the kingdom of Denmark. That sounds wow. white as hell. Yeah, that it does. sounds <laughs> fucking white. Well, huh. I'd imagine that since they're an isolated island, there's probably no natural gas resources this is or like any some, oil drilling. This so is some Viking shit. Whale fat is a major heating source, mm. uh, fuel for heat. Yeah. These are white people. These are white Denmark gals? Some of them are hot, too. Yeah. These are the yeah, Mambo Denmark number five Sweden girls. is known, right? Isn't that the... That's a very uh, attractive oh, uh, yeah. land. Man. They're attractive. Yeah. This is some Viking shit right here. Does that get you going, this outfit? I do. I like yeah. to see that. I <laughs> would like you, to see Would you outfit. do a Denmark whale hunt role play if push came to shove? <laughs> yeah. She I was like, please to... act like someone. I don't do accents, but please do dress up like whale hunt man, Mr. Corolla. It turned into a Filipino massage. <laughs> uh, yeah. Yeah. Parlor. I yeah. got that. Would you, would you, what would you say? Um, I'm trying to think of. Uh, Yapper, snapper, or crapper. Yeah. <laughs> oh, nice. what, was, what was fucking, what was the assistant guy in Moby Dick? Feng Shui? Ying Yang. Oh, God. Queek Quag? Queek Quag. Queek Quag. I'd have you call me Queek Quag. Because <laughs> that was like yeah. the assistant purser, whatever cool. Gopher's job was in Moby Dick. <laughs> All right. How do you know that? Queek Quag. I, I never read Moby Dick. But I know. I, I didn't know that. <laughs> D minus. I knew he had a crazy. I know Queek Quag. Well, that's pretty good. Yeah. Ben got it. All right. Let's bring it home. All right. Check out the Water Cooler Podcast. All right. You can go to amcrawl.com for all the live shows. Portland this Friday, Saturday. And then Adam Ray's tour in the country. And what you should Woo. do is go to adamraycomedy.com and then check out his YouTube page. Yes, for, please. The uh, coming up in a Dr. Few Phil weeks. Live with Bill Burr. And I got a Best of Sacramento crowd work special on my YouTube as well. Love you guys. So, till next time, Adam Kroll for Adam Ray and Chris Maxipat and Quee Quay Sang. Mahalo. Mahalo.